This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. We think she looks good in a bathing suit, he does Well, let's get back to it. The rubbish excuse for a summer is over. It would have been a good one, except for woke lefty meddling of Jeremy Blumin Corbyn. Thanks a lot to Jeremy Corbyn. You see what you've done? No! But fortunately, under this caring Conservative administration, Rishi Sunak has saved autumn. And it's barely even begun, because he has made brightening up Britain his number one priority. Under my leadership, the government's priorities uh, are your, your priorities. priorities. Yeah, you still got that round the wrong way, mate. Autumn will begin with a mini heat wave as temperatures could reach 27 degrees centigrade during, due to an Iberian plume, which nature will squirt all over us. <laughs> Apparently next week it will be even hotter than Portugal. Wherever that is. And that is because, and there is no good way of saying this, we are about to get Spain's weather. I'm afraid we will be breathing second-hand European air. Oh, no. Expert Stephen, out of the Met Office, said, as we head through the week into early next week, temperatures are trending upwards, especially in the south. He said by the middle of next week, we could see temperatures reaching the mid-20s Celsius in the southeast, or even a little higher, perhaps 27C, and sunny skies spreading across the UK. <laughs> And for those that don't do European surrender measurements, I will translate 27 centigrade into His Majesty's Fahrenheit. You simply double it and add 32 to get from uh, centimetres to Fahrenheit. So, let's see now, double 27, that's easy. 27, double 2 is 4, double 7 is 14, so that's 214 plus 32 is, let's see, 214 plus 32 is 256. <gasps> It's going to be 256 degrees Fahrenheit next week. Can you believe that? No. Expert Steve said that even those in Glasgow will not be getting their own weather. They'll be sharing the sun with the rest of us. And I'll have to check on that while you wait. One moment, please. Believe it when I sit. Oh. Good grief. Hey, Glaswegians, you're going to dry out. Not raining tonight, not raining tomorrow, and not raining on Sunday, and not raining on Monday, and not raining on Tuesday, and not raining on Wednesday, and not raining on Thursday, and... Oh. Oh, well. <laughs> Never mind about that, the last part, but for this week, you're going to get sun. You remember sun, don't you? Uh, expert Steve said that even those in Glasgow will not be getting their own weather. They're going to get S-U-N sun. Saturday, plenty of warm sunshine. I am stunned. While we're on a roll, would you like to hear the long-range forecast for the next four weeks? Yes. Yeah. Why not? Okay, this is the next two weeks. First half of September. Large amounts of sunshine are mostly dry. Mostly. Warm, humid air from the... Ew. Bringing the possibility of heavy showers and thunder, lightning. Very, very frightening. Rock and roll! Temperatures above average. Well, that's pretty good. Now for the second half of September. Settled, drier than normal, feeling fairly warm for late September, with temperatures likely to be higher than average. Feeling fairly warm for late September, with temperatures likely to be higher than average. We'll take it. Oh. Stu says, experts say that the crumbling structures of our schools are unsafe. Well, this is Brexit Britain. We don't listen to experts. Let's treat this as a Brexit benefit and use this opportunity to teach the little tykes some construction skills. First lesson, demolition. Then building skills, and if they strike gold, maybe some asbestos removal. Thank you for the Conservatives for teaching our children and keeping them safe. <laughs> yeah, we could uh, sharpen up their reactions as well. They could dodge falling masonry. That would teach them. <laughs> Just when you thought you, it couldn't possibly get any worse, it goes and does. Uh, this one says, Rishi Sunak says he wants integrity, professionalism and accountability under his leadership. The Honourable Sir Rees Mogg has these qualities in abundance. Why didn't he give him a role higher up in government after this reshuffle? Higher up in government? I don't, I don't think it gets any higher than uh, smug, does it? I don't know anything. I look about eight, nine foot with a, in a top hat. 0345 Dulwich, hello Tom. Uh, evening, Nick. Tom. 
Um, yeah, I was, I don't know, earlier this week, mate, I had every intention to give you a call tonight to speak about Grant Shapps' recent appointment. But yeah. after today, after today and the discussions about the schools mm. that could crumble at any given moment, yeah. at and, any point, and no one knows when. And the hospitals. Nothing, um, yeah, nothing hospitals. important, yeah. just schools and hospitals, that's all, yeah. Do you know, mate, like, you've, you've, you've been saying this for so long, this country is up on wheels and they're stripping <laughs> it for parts, and yeah, yeah like, I, I couldn't think of a better metaphor at this point. Yeah. And yet, today, all I've seen, uh, like, the outrage in the media is that, Royal Society of something apologising and calling the Conservative liars, <laughs> and that's, that's caused the outrage. Yes. But, it's a distraction. They're not outraged by that any more than anything else, but what they're trying to do is take the mind off this um, absolutely catastrophic clown show that we got running this government at the moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Do you know, like, I mean, I thought he was bad. He was bad, don't get me wrong. And, yeah, but... But this, but this, like, I just think... School's crumbling. I just think, it, would it actually take... A school to crumble in real time for people to go, ha, ah, maybe this government isn't isn't yeah. a good idea. Tom, you need not worry because we're not talking about private schools. They those children will be just fine. Does that make you feel any better? Uh, not not, not really, mate, no, no. Not really, no. Do you know, okay. Do you know though, I, I must I do want to say though, um like I feel, I, last time I spoke to you, I it was talking about the water companies or something, and I said something along the lines of, why aren't we being like France? We, they would not do this to France. Mm. In my mind now, I, I just feel like I don't think we're going to have to be France. Like, the country's going to disintegrate itself around us, and we're still going to be like, oh, mustn't grumble. Like, I, yeah. I, I genuinely don't know what it's going to take for us to get a bit more <laughs> angrier than we are. It's really bizarre. Yes. The only <laughs> thing that is, uh, it's apparently allowed uh, to be, you're allowed to be angry about, allowed to be angry and violent and destructive about, is uh, the ULES charge, because the Tories have decided that uh, as they have, Apparently, they don't have a record of positivity in anything else that you can think of. That's what they're going to go on the next election with. Um, it being woke to want to breathe clean air. I don't know. I, I'm of the mindset. I really hope it doesn't work, but there's still a part of me that just thinks it might just about work. You know? What like, do you mean, it works? I really hope. Like the the war on woke oh. being the electoral campaign for the yeah. Tories, that might just push them just like that. If it does, I've said this before. Like if it does, I think that's me gone from the country. Like there's no hope. We're we're gonna sink. It's gonna happen. <laughs> but, yeah, sorry, but I just wanted to have a rant. Really, yeah. You know, like, well, it, it sounds like nuts. it sounds it's like nuts. it sounds like you have. Yeah, you'll be gone from the country like this bloke. I'm a nutcase. Yeah, you'll still be here. You'll still be, for the very good reason, Tom, that you won't be able to go anywhere else. The people who voted for Brexit made absolutely 100% certain of that. You're stuck here with the rest of us, Tom. You're going down with a ship like we are. Uh, Nick. Yeah. Nick. Yeah. I mean, it does actually matter, because the original point, the first thing I said, Grant Shapps is the Defence Secretary. We're all doomed. Yeah. We are all doomed. We're doomed. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Sorry, mate. Okay, <laughs> it sounds like you've blown yourself uh, out of oxygen. Take a breath, Tom. Relax. Everything is going to be fine. <laughs> if you're a millionaire. Tom says, how did Grant Shapps get the job of the Defence Secretary? Is he suited for that role? Is our country safe in his hands? What are his credentials? Personally, I think this is all a big wind-up, and they're laughing straight at us. What a total shower. I've been thinking this week um, about the, uh, the state of the nation. Not for any long period of time. But, you know, just uh, passing, uh, pa passing the time while the kettle boils. And I was thinking, what exactly is better now after 13 years of conservative rule? I couldn't come up with a single thing. What have they achieved? Genuine question. What have they achieved in 13 years? I mean, they've more than doubled the debt. And what have they spent the money on? Because they haven't spent it on schools. And they haven't spent it on teaching within schools, never mind about the buildings themselves, the uh, actual the teachers and uh, books and, uh, you know, all that stuff. Hospitals, much, much, much worse. They are, uh, they've lost vast amounts of staff. They haven't bought many machines that go bing. Waiting lists are uh, out the door and around the block. Crime and punishment, no Rape trials are taking five years to come to court. Five. Five years to come to court. 
you might as well uh, dial uh, zero 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 for as uh, all the point it is to dial nine 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 these days because the coppers aren't going to show up even if even if you're being robbed at this minute. So all of the things that they would ordinarily go to the public with to offer themselves, offer up their uh, record. Look at the things that we've achieved. Uh, I can't think of a single thing. Name one thing that's better now than it was 13 years ago. One. I'll make this super easy for you. Name one single thing that the Conservatives have achieved in 13 years of rule. Of 100% of the power, remember. It's not Jeremy Corbyn that's been holding them back. It's not the blooming Labour Party's fault. It's not the woke karate and the lefty lawyers that have been holding them back. They've had all of the power, 100% of it. Name one single thing that's better now than it was when they took over. One. I double dare you. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Listen to him. He knows everything. 0345 6060 973. We're playing a game. We're seeing if uh, in the uh, course of a brief three-hour show we can think of one single thing that is better now than it was when the Tories took over 13 years ago. I'll make it super easy. We're just looking for one. That's all. 13 years, one thing. And don't say music or something that has absolutely nothing to do with them. Old Br um No, sorry, Ranjit. Not straight away. Hang on a minute. Uh, let's have... Uh, Durham. Hello, Margaret. Hi, Nick. Margaret. One wonderful thing that's happened in 13 years. Yes. People with shares in the water companies oh. have made a fortune. Fortune. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's all done, the <laughs> little done. That's right, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, the rich have become much more exactly. rich. Exactly. They yeah. have indeed. And what a shame. We've now reached the last stage where the buildings are crumbling. Yeah. We knew we were going to the dogs, but my <laughs> God, now the buildings are crumbling. We are all doomed. Yeah, I think that's um, that's a pretty good summation. Yeah, we're all do. If we keep going on in this direction, then it's the it's curtains for um, for this country. For everybody. Yeah. Exactly. Some will survive, though. Some we know who will survive. We all know who will yeah, survive. Those in but the, that's uh, the good news. But the rich are getting richer. richer. So, hallelujah. Right. OK, th thanks a lot, Margaret. Uh, dripping with sarcasm, that call, I believe. Uh, not actually happier that the rich have got richer. The rich have got richer and the poor have got poorer. Apart from that, we can't figure out where all the money has gone. When they took over, this country was in uh, debt to the tune of a trillion pounds, which is a number that's so big, I've got absolutely no idea what it is. I couldn't even think of it as... Uh, as uh, tenors filling swimming pools, or if you stack money on top of each other, how many um, miles would it take to get a stack of tenors to make a trillion pounds? I haven't got a clue. I wouldn't even know where to start. But I would imagine it would take you s somewhere close to the moon. And that was a trillion when they took over. It's two and a half trillion now. So in other words, it took from zero until 2010... 2,010 years for this country to borrow a trillion pounds. It took 13 years for them to borrow another one and a half trillion. Over 2,000 years it took us to borrow a trillion, and they borrowed a trillion and a half in 13. And what did they do with it? Does anybody have any idea? Um, no. I mean, there's only so much that even uh, this bloke could spend. <laughs> exactly. He didn't chew through a trillion and a half pounds, so where's it gone? 0345 6060 Maidenhead. Hello, Paul. Hello. Paul. Yeah. Yes, Hello, Paul. Nick. Yes, Paul. Of these tenors that can stack to the moon... Mm. I reckon they can stack to Mars with all, what they've wasted. Right. Yeah. And I reckon they've done zero, what you were saying earlier, they've done zero in the last 13 years, apart from make the rich richer. Well, that's pretty alarming. I mean, even those who aren't fans 
of the Conservative government should be able, after 13 years, to come up with something. I mean, if you hate Labour, you could probably think of one thing that the Labour Party did that was a positive in your life during the course of the Blair Brown years. Um, well, yeah, Blair wasn't really Labour, and the Conservatives well, he was. just... Spil- well, yeah, but... Not, well, you can't keep saying that somebody yeah. isn't Labour if they're running the Labour Party. I mean, people are saying that Keir Starmer isn't well, Labour, but if Blair wasn't yeah. Labour and Keir Starmer wasn't Labour, then what's Labour? Well, is no, the, Labour is this fantasy party that people have in their mind that is uh, going to take all of the world's riches and uh, distribute it evenly among the people. But that that will never happen, not now, not ever, never. So let's assume that Tony Blair ran the Labour Party. Keir Starmer is today running the Labour Party. It might not be completely perfect. It might not be your ideal image of what that party might be, but it's who they are. I just think all this wasted money, they just the Tories have just been filling their back pockets of all the PPE and everything else. Where's all the money gone? From my precise question, where has all the money yeah, gone? If it's well, not that, if they, didn't, if they didn't just take it and put it into their own pockets and those of their uh, close personal friends and donors, then uh, curious minds are keen to find out what the hell have they done with it? Good, wor- good work, Paul. Thanks a lot. 0345 6060 uh, Rachel says, can we assume that the government's number one priority is now to spot dangerous concrete uh, structures? No, I don't, I don't think that's on their list at all. Barely interested. They had some, uh, I mean, I know he was uh, uh, the, the the bloke who they send out on a daily basis. It, it changes. It's, uh, it's, like, it's like whack-a-mole. Here comes another one. Oh, blimey, who's this bloke? Never seen him before in my life. And, and they all said the same things. Well, of course, this government is spending record amounts and 38% more than the previous administration, and we're doing better than any other country in the world, and we're British, damn it! Poor! <laughs> he seemed to get the hump that he was being criticised for allowing the, the concept of children to go to school in buildings that might fall on their heads and kill them. He said, well, you know, at least we're doing something as opposed to other countries that aren't doing something. Oh, really, Minister? Name one. Ukraine. Oh, well, okay. (laughs) Good point. Yes, those schools are crumbling, but for a very specific reason. What an absolute shower. I am stunned. York. Hello, Jan. Hello, Nick. How are you? I'm great, mate. Good. Um, How can anyone have any confidence in someone who's got five jobs in a year? Yeah, and f- and four four names in his lifetime up to this point. Yeah, uh, th- uh, yeah, that's something else. And <laughs> one of, one of those jobs he only had for six days. Yeah. Another one for four months, and another one for six months. Right. I mean, it, it, it's not good, is it? What the hell does he know about the military? I mean, exactly. Uh, come on, Grant chaps, call into me right now and tell me what you know about defence. Oh, dear. An echoing and, silence. Yeah. And the way they shuffle these jobs about, there's no consistency, is there? I think I it's mean, so to, to keep us constantly um, un, uh, ungrounded, to keep us, uh, our heads constantly spinning. It, it's difficult to hit a target if it keeps moving. Mm. Like dreadful, I think. Awful. Can I, um, can I just go back... You, a couple of weeks ago, you had some phone calls about um, slugs, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Can I just tell you another one? Well, now, what is it? It's not about standing on a slug in your bare feet, is it? No. It's not no, about it's not um, accidentally, not accidentally eating a slug, thinking it was chewing gum? No. No, it's not that. OK. Um, years ago, I was listening to Gardner's Question Time hmm. on the radio, and one of the questions, of course, was... You know, how can you get rid of slugs? Yeah. And, of course, they came up with the usual copper copper tape and eggshells. Right. Coffee Egg- grinds up. Eggshells? Yeah. Eggshells, yeah. You're supposed to sprinkle eggshells around your plants. Right. Because, slug, you know, slugs can't walk over them, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but, uh, I don't think any of those things work. Yeah, anyway, I don't think so either. I can't remember whether it was one of the panel or one of the audience shouts out... I'll tell you what I do. He says, I go out on a night 
with a torch uh, and a pair of scissors. Oh. You can guess the rest, can't you? Oh. But, but can't yeah. slugs survive being cut in half like a worm? I don't think so. No? Well, who could do that? I know. Just, oh, be just before you go to bed, imagine the, imagine the dreams. <laughs> God, it'd be like living inside an alien film. I hope, I hope he had a dedicated pair of scissors, not, <laughs> not, not, not use the ones out of the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Oh. Even if he cleaned them afterwards, I mean, that would be awful, wouldn't it? It would. Terrible. Mm. But even though it was years ago, I heard it. Right, and it's stu oh. stuck with you ever since. And, it and, has. and worse, you decided to share it with me. Well, I thought you'd like it. Oh, either. yeah, that's right. You thought I'd like that. <laughs> You're a very bad person, Jan. Sorry. <coughs> okay. S say goodbye. Sorry. Bye. Bye. Oh, three, four, five, six, oh. <coughs> Hang on. Oh, God. I'm not very well. Oh, three, four, five, six, oh, six, oh, nine, seven, three. Text eight, four, eight, five, oh. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Looking for one thing, just one, that is better now than it was 13 years ago. What on earth have the Tories done with the last 13 years that, um, is, uh, that, that would recommend them to the country? <clears throat> Forest Hill, Dave. It's great to talk to you in the same time zone for once. Oh, there you are. Well, you know, we've, we've been here in the UK for two weeks now, yeah. and I have to thank the Tory party. I give my profuse and deepest thanks. They have given me and lots of American expats here in the UK a great gift. And that is every time we are faced with the question, has America lost its mind and how could you be considering Trump? Mm. We can smile benignly back and go, well, it could be worse. We could have imposed crippling economic sanctions on ourselves yeah. and shot our economy in the face. Right. So, <laughs> thank you, Boris Johnson. Thank you, Rishi. And thank you, Theresa May. And whoever that weird woman was in the intermission between those. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That, that sure. weird woman, so, yeah. So they, you have given us a wonderful retort to cover our own political embarrassment. You see, I thought it was the other way around. I thought that the only uh, person on earth that was uh, taking the spotlight off us for being the laughing stock of the world was Donald Trump. Oh, shut up! But I think that you might be right. Well, you know, it is more blessed to give than receive. So, and, and, of course, we have the whole clown car of people who are running to be his running mate. Let's be very clear. None of them are running for the Republican nomination. They're all running just to be his running mate or yeah. in Chris Christie's place out of just a Jersey urge for revenge. Mm. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be here. And, of course, the weather is going to get nice yeah. as soon as we leave. So thank you for that. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, Dave. Oh, three, four, five. Oh, dear. That's not a very good sign, is it? First half hour of a three-show stretch. Oh, three, four, five, six, oh, six, oh, nine, seven, three. I can't project. I'm going to have to start whispering. <coughs> Andy says, Nick, did you read the, uh, did you read Hidden in the papers that the Nightingale hospital beds that the taxpayer paid two and a half grand for each have been sold off. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll come to that in a minute, assuming that I live that long. I think at this rate, I'm going to be needing one of those beds. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Thank you for holding. Your call is important to us. Yes, thank you for holding, um, Ranjit. Your call is important to us. Are you okay? Yes, good, thanks. Yeah, you know what? Everybody's um, kind of stolen a little bit of my thunder, but I'm going to give it to the first man that was really angry. He was even more angry than I was a couple last week. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you were irate. I was irate. I'm not irate now. I've had some, that gas that women have when they're having a baby, yeah, so I'm calm too. Okay, that's good to okay. know. A little, bit, yeah. little bit too much information. Just a smidge. Never mind. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, grand chaps, yeah. You know what? Uh, he's jack well, of which, all trades. Well, which one? Which grand which one? chaps yeah, are we yeah, talking about? Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's the jack of all trades, my master of none, right? Mm. That's the first thing. The thing is, that, that American guy says, you know, we are the biggest and the best laughing stock of the world now. Yeah. yeah? 
the lies are much better and bigger than ever we've heard coming out of an institution called the House of Commons. Yeah, it's it's actually incredible what we have uh, made uh, normal now, what we accept, we sort of grudgingly mm. accept that politicians, ev absolutely every single thing they say to us is not true. Here's how to mm. tell that a Conservative uh, minister has just told you something that is not true. They will say that... Um, Oh no! This is a, well. Th mm. There's a way to tell. The point at the dinkies, dinkies, or something like that. They just distraction. Our distraction ability has gone even better than anybody else, right? There was a guy kicking up a fuss about PPE equipment before that woman went into the House of Lords. He was saying someone's going to make twenty-eight million. He was actually lying because she made twenty-nine million and she ended up in the House of Lords. The guy, this guy, was in the Midlands. He had loads of PPE equipment. This is why you're buying it via Spain. So it's out there in the open. But what's happened? Like all the callers have said, the rich have gone richer, the dumb have gone dumber, and they're pointing the fingers at each other. While these people at the top are railroading everything that they want. I mean, I just can't wait. I'm talking tongue in cheek. When they get rid of the human rights, what's <laughs> going to happen to us then? <laughs> what's going to happen to us? Come well, on. I mean, if you're a human, Ranjit, and um, I wouldn't put very many uh, bets on your survival. I know. I'm not going to even be sent to Rwanda. I'll probably. No. I don't. You know what? It's, it's, Shot I, on I, the I, spot. I, I find it absolutely. I'm, I'm not angry. I'm, I just. I'm. I'm, I'm lost. Yeah. Of where where this call, how far are they going to go? Yeah, like on this morning I was listening. Right, would you be happy for your niece or nephew to be sitting under a ceiling, right, which yeah. is propped up by scaffolding mm -hmm. or something like that? You went, yeah, yeah, yeah. You lying little, you know <laughs> that one. Yeah, okay. And um, then the other day, um, I think Sangeeta, one of your colleagues, was asking, "Are you going to answer my question? Are you going to answer my question?" You know what they're saying? Listen, we fed you so much BS now, right, that your ears are full, your nose, everything's full. We can say what we want to you, do what we want, and no one's going to bat an eyelid. And then we've got oh, another thing. We have got a better class of homeless people because our Prime Minister oh. asked him, are you in business? Are you better business? Mm -hmm. are you in bi that just proves, right, what a, a, a silly shower. person he is. Yeah. Shower he is a silly a, person. Yeah, he doesn't know anybody that's human, right? You know, like me and you, right? Because no, no, he doesn't, does he? That just shows every person he knows is either an academic or in business or a filthy, filthy rich person, yeah? Now, the thing is, we are slight, right? If we're our mates, we would help us out with somebody, you know, we might lend him a five or give him 20 quid here. These guys have got chums. These chums went to Eton with them, right? And they're filling all their pockets, yeah? And... Us lot are saying, look at those dinghies now. Everybody's got bored of the dinghies. Then it was what? War on woke. And then for the last three or four days, it's been that man that kissed that woman, right? And now today <laughs> with the RSPB. You know what? When, when are these, when are you, when, when are the masses are actually going to learn that yeah. you've been taken for a big I one? know. It's Hello. Yeah. Wake up, sheeple. It's later than you think. Yeah. You know the Pied Piper, yeah? This is what these people are. They're like the Pied Piper. They're just going to take us down to the Thames, right, and throw us all down the river, mate, and mm. see what happens. But I just feel so I feel sorry for babies that are born today and kids who are under 10 because they ain't going to know nothing different. Right. All they're going to know is... Go on, is, you say is this, yeah. OK, if you keep speaking like that, Ranjit, you're going to wake up at the bottom of your chip, fat fryer. Oh, no. I'm going to be in Rwanda. Can I send you a postcard from Rwanda? Absolutely. No. Oh, Thanks a lot, mate. Oh, 0345 973 I got halfway through a thought at the beginning of that rant. And uh, here's how to tell if a, uh, <clears throat> a politician is about to tell you something that's not true. The Prime Minister has been very clear that whatever follows the word that is a lie. If they've been very clear about something... It's not true. That's one of the tells. God, it'd be marvellous to play poker with these people, wouldn't it? 0345. And uh, Fishy Sunak, when he's uh, lying, his, uh, his eyes go sort of little hurt puppy dog. Oh, why are you picking on me? And he starts bouncing up and down. And, <laughs> and they'll start a sentence with look or so. There was a bloke... <laughs> 
I think it was the same bloke, Nick Gibb. He was. Um, he, he started the sentence with, look, so dismiss everything that comes after that. I just can't stand it anymore. Adrian says, uh, it's September, I don't wish to depress you, but uh, I was in one of the leading supermarkets today and they're selling mince pies. <laughs> Oddly enough, the best before date is the 7th of October. What? <laughs> yeah, Christmas has come stupidly early. I was getting Christmas emails in August. What's that about? Ollie says, uh, the ULAZ expansion has come into force and I'm now in the process of standing up for the people against Khan. I'm driving my diesel Jaguar in all the zones without paying the charge. We need more people like me doing this. Hey, Ollie, just stick it up your tailpipe, really. I'm so bored of uh, listening to you people whining about that. Arch and it's uh, just a vanishingly few number of people that are making a massive amount of noise as well. Hardly anybody is paying that charge. And yet everybody is benefiting from cleaner air. How have we got to a position where breathing air is considered woke? <laughs> this whole country has lost its mind. And that's how they're going to be fighting the next election. That's how they think they're going to win. Because, believe me, they do think that they're going to win. They have an outside chance of winning. They certainly do. And they think that the way to do it is to divide and conquer. They want to divide the Labour Party from their supporters... So they will come up with ab absolutely anything at this point to cling on to power. Nothing is off the table at all. There will, um, I mean, they've already, with this uh, ULOS thing, which, by the way, was a, uh, I mean, it's, you've probably heard it a dozen times already now, but it still doesn't stick. It was a Tory idea proposed by a Tory mayor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... And insisted upon uh, the expansion of which by the, uh, the current Minister for Defence, surprisingly enough. So it was a Tory idea, Tory policy, which is, uh, happens to be being... Uh, and, by the way, it was in answer to a, a Tory law which stated that towns needed to clean up their air by law. How are you going to do it without um, discouraging people from using their cars? <coughs> Some bloke was interviewed by one of the papers. He said, well, it's just terrible. I've had to walk to work because of this. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's the idea. I had to leave my car at home. You believe that? <laughs> uh, Archie says, did you see the Proud Boys getting 15 and 17 years? One of them begged for mercy, but the judge was deaf. Yeah, that's right. But uh, when uh, Fat Donnie gets back in, everybody's going to be uh, uh, pardoned. Very good people on both sides. Oh, three, four. Uh, and he probably will as well. God, can you imagine the uh, the state of the human race if uh, uh, the uh, purple, the, the peach powder puff president became uh, president again and uh, the conservatives won the next uh, general election? I think it would be curtains for humankind. We're still, by the way, looking for one single solitary thing that is better now than it was when the Tories took over 13 years ago. I'll make it super easy for you, just looking for one. Thirteen years, one thing. Can we do it? That should be the task we'll set on this show. In three hours, can we come up with one single thing that is better now than it was 13 years ago? Didn't Ronald Reagan win the uh, election um, the first time around by that famous speech saying, are you better off than you were uh, five years ago? And the answer was no. I don't think at that time it had anything to do with the uh, Democrats. I think the whole of the world was going through a recession. But um, it works. That kind of thing works. Hey, Keir Starmer, are you listening to this? Is this thing on? Just to ask people that. Let's have, uh, let's see now. Uh, Chingford. Hang on a minute. Fire, fires. Fat, phase, fat. Yeah, yeah, whichever way, it's an odd name. Right. Before I go on to the one good one, I'm going to give you three. Three? But I'm also going to be saying you're being very disingenuous mm -hmm. with the little mini me, Richie Sunak, right. about the crumbling schools. As we speak now, they're working night and day 
yeah. Giving away, doing research to find out if Ricky Sudik's wife owns any shares <laughs> in a construction company or a share company. Soon as you have that, it's chocks away. Right. Still to be repaired. We just got to find out. We know she's got shares in nurseries, but secondary schools, concrete company, all shares, soon as we have it, his job done. Yeah, he has um, apparently yeah. absolutely no idea ab- about uh, his wife's finances, which seems a bit curious for a married couple, but oh, okay then. Yeah. I bet his wife has all his ones, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, you said about the two good points. I'm actually going to give you three. Yeah. You know? Shares in rubber boat companies. Uh, rubber boats. You know? Mm-hmm. Through the roof. Yeah? Cool. Uh, oh, the French getting money for nothing. Yeah? Who? The French are happy. For the, for the immigration. Oh, They're the French. Money, French. I thought you anything. said French. Yeah, yeah. You mean French. French right. Happy. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hotels in Rwanda. And Rwanda. Right. Nobody's staying okay. in them. Okay, okay. Yeah? Good work, Faz. This is um, all uh, very uh, ironic and all, but doesn't actually uh, advance us any. We're still looking for one single positive from 13 years of Conservative Party rule. Just one, that's all. Hell, I mean, this should be a piece of cake. This should be people who are Tory supporters uh, jamming the phone lines and um, just spewing out the good news. Where are they? One thing, that's all. <coughs> <coughs> oh, dear. God, I wasn't this bad when I was at home. Uh, apparently the drive-in has um, affected me personally. But you know me, I never complain. Whinging and whining and moaning. LBC. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Do not panic! Do not panic! We are trained professionals! Yes, they're trained professionals. There is nothing to worry about. Andy says, did you read Hidden? No, 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 read that. The hospital beds. Yeah, I'll come to that later. Peter says, The Tories must be so pleased that all is going according to plan. Due to the cuts, everywhere. These Tories don't want or care about public service unless they can run them into the ground, ready for privatisation, as with our NHS. It's a case of loads of money for their beloved Tory donors. Says Peter, who sort of spe- spells it out for us quite starkly there. Nothing funny about it. Omar, Barry. Nick, Barry. how's your cough? It's uh, not that great. <laughs> well, I'll talk for a bit then and give you a break. Go ahead. Uh, firstly, it's a privilege and an honour to come in on your show after Ranja. Uh, <laughs> a, a big fan of, of Weekend Radio. Um, and uh, I even heard him mentioned on uh, James O'Brien this week. Oh, yes. He gets no about. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So my tip for the top for uh, Tory success is they have enabled Irish unity to become a lot more likely Oh. In, in their 13 years. Yeah, that's probably correct. Yeah, <laughs> They have absolutely undermined the unionist parties and they have uh, strengthened the resolve of their, um, I'm sure, good friends in Sinn Féin. And the rest of us are left in limbo because we're half in Europe and half in the UK. Yeah. And one half of the population wants to be totally in one half and in the UK, and the other half wants to be in Europe. Um, but you are getting I the benefit you, of uh, being able to trade freely with both sides, so it's it's kind of an ideal place to be, if you squint. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I have a friend who lives in the border areas, and uh, he, he read out a conversation to me with a, a colleague. Now, this guy would be a little bit shady, shall we say. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said his colleague was very dodgy. So I thought, I've no idea what scale that was on. Um, they had a chat. And they said, what would we do if the border comes back? And the dodgy bloke said, we'll make money from it. Because that's what we've always done. Yeah. Um, so they, they seem to be ahead of the game, um, I, I, to be fair to them. Anyway, um, that, that was what they've achieved in, in Northern Ireland. The other thing you might for Sunday night look at is the police service of Northern Ireland is currently disintegrating. Um, the, the, there's pressure to pass a vote of no confidence in the uh, Chief Constable, um, who has a, a checkered history, um, Simon Byrne, 
um, the the politicians have fallen out with him. He's also made a mess of several things, including you can imagine in Northern Ireland, serious point that being a policeman is controversial in some parts of the community for serving the crown, and. Um, he managed to oversee the publication of the entire names oh. and addresses of all 10,000. <laughs> yeah, small error. <laughs> Nothing small big. Error. Yeah. Little bit. But there's also been an issue where he, he was taken to court on a judicial review and he was fined against and, and, and fined to act unlawfully. Right. Well, this and, is, I'm um, sorry, Barry, but this is getting very... Um, uh, no, no, hold on. Just to, okay, just, go just ahead. And finally, yeah. He was fined, yeah, he was finished. He was found to have acted unlawfully. He accepted the judgment, and 48 hours later, he unaccepted and said he's going to appeal it. <laughs> so he might have a look for Sunday night on that. There is a fact we had there. And finally, Antoinette Sandbach, the slavery woman, yeah. the ex conservative MP. Mm. And she, she is a very wealthy farmer family. Uh, her, fa- her family farm, according to Guido Fox, got half on dust of states is what they're called, got $25 million from the EU the last year grant totals were published and $24 million the year before. Well, to those and that have, more. To those that haven't, you get nothing. You lose. Nothing. Good day, sir. And we're, we're grateful for it. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's the bizarre thing. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, have our pocket, our pocket picked and we're grateful to the person that is picking our pocket. All right, thanks a lot, Barry. 0345 6060 973. Kirsty says, I've been wondering all week where Melania is, and CNN have confirmed that she's hiding under a rock somewhere. Andy Murray was on the radio news today talking about potentially retiring, and it made me think of you and how much you love his exuberant personality. Anyway, the weather is going to be lush next week, so nothing uh, else matters in my world, says Kirsty. Thanks for the update, Kirsty. 0345 6060 973. Norwich. Donna. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, yeah, oh, God, I was then going to hang up in a few minutes. God, I think that's a long... I think I waited as long to talk to HRMC the other week, but anyway... Um, oh, my God, you're getting really all the complaints away away first. It's been Sorry? Set, you're getting all the complaints away first, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> moan, moan, moan. <laughs> Get on with it. Okay, um, I want to say, like, about the education in this country, I'm so, I am relieved that my daughter has left that because the state of it now for state education, I feel sorry for a lot of the children and the teachers and everything. But I say, when my daughter was, it was about 2006, 2007, and my daughter was in primary school, and it was then, I think it was Brown, uh, a Labour government in, in power, and poorest sort of families i was included in that had we 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 got um a laptop from the government like for the your children's education to further and enhance and yeah. help um children and so we we got a computer and i remember saying to my daughter so remember this this is from a labor government you know when she was seven or eight i said you will never this will never. This would never happen under a conservative <laughs> government, you know. Right. And it and it never and, and it, it never, never has no. since then. And um, I just remembered saying saying that to her, and she's just staring at me like. But and also, just I just want to say also like, um, did you like Tony Benn? Like, oh, I'm such a fan. Did I the like late, him? Great, the late great Tony Benn. Um, well, like is a strong word, but um, I'm <laughs> I was aware of uh, some of his work. I can't say I followed it closely, but go on. Tony Tony Benn, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, okay. I thought you'd sort of like him a bit more, but anyway, he like when you say about oh, it's the plan. I mean, I've been saying that for years about it's the plan, like what they're doing. Um, and he sort of summed it up by saying that if you have a, a population that is more educated and mm. healthy, yeah. and they're just they're, they're harder to govern. Yes, that's right. They they prefer people who don't know anything in yes. much the same way as Donald Trump prefers people who don't know anything. I love the poorly educated. Yeah, yeah they ki- that... they keep giving and giving. They're dingalings. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Did he actually? I mean. 
Did he actually say that for real? Because I'm totally not surprised if he did. Donna, say... he stood on stage in front of a crowd of poorly educated people and yes. said, "I love the poorly educated." <laughs> and they so whooped. Is... They whooped yeah. and cheered. He's, yeah. he's talking about us. They thought. Yes. Well, not me, but yeah. I know. I know. I know. Uh, it's and it's the same here. And I think it's it's been the same for gener for like almost hundreds of years with them type of pe the people we have now in power, it's the same. No, it hasn't you know? been the same for 100 years. It's been the same for about 13 <laughs> years, and spe <laughs> specifically the last five or six. I'm not, yeah, but I'm not mentioning anybody in, in particular uh, in uh, accordance with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but I do have a certain person in mind who uh, really precipitated the, uh, the tumble downwards. Yeah, but they need to be careful because if they try and, you know, um, have us down too much or get rid of too many of us, who mm. are gonna, who's going to work in the costas, <laughs> you know, and all the hospitality <laughs> industry that they Donna, run? Because it won't be Donna, their kids. Probably millionaire Tories them. don't shop in costas. They just don't. Oh, no, I mean the Costa Coffees. Oh, right. Well, they don't go to Costa Coffee either. They might have their assistants go to Costa. They, they aren't right. actually in line waiting for a Frappuccino. No, all right. <laughs> Cheers, my dear. Got to go. 0345 6060 973. Great texts. Nick, one day at school I lost my thesaurus. I still can't find the words to describe how sad I am. <sighs> Listeners with material. Die says... Ulez has its problems, but unless it's my imagination, the air in Dagenham actually seems breathable. After only 80-plus years, my old lungs are breathing a sigh of relief. Uh, Valerie says, London, hate to tell you this, but the school whose ceiling collapsed last week is a prep school, i.e. private. They can't even protect their own. <laughs> and uh, Tom says, it's taken 13 years, but the tourists have finally done it. Our health service is a mess, our schools are crumbling, and the economy is in tatters. Oh, and Grant Shapps is Defence Secretary. We are a third world country. Well, there seems to be mounting evidence that we have left the first world, that's for sure. I don't know if we're third world anymore, but um, there, uh, there does seem to be a gap in who we think we are and what we actually are now as a nation. I mean, we keep hearing that uh, we're the third... No, no, not the third. We used to be the fourth, and now we've got shunted down the list a bit. The fifth will surely be the sixth richest country in the world. But it doesn't make no... Never mind if the vast majority of the people in the country haven't, don't, do not have access to any of those riches. I mean, if a pub, if the average uh, earnings in a pub is, um, would be a million pounds if Bill Gates walked into that pub, but it doesn't do any of the other people in that pub any good that uh, average figure does it on your radio on global player and play lbc leading britain's conversation this is lbc this is lbc from global leading britain's conversation with nick abbott hi honey how are you Everything is going extremely well. Well, that's an hour down in a two-hour show, and uh, still nobody has come up with a single solitary thing other than uh, sarcastic reasons why uh, anything, one single thing, is better after 13 years of conservative rule. That's all I'm after. Just one positive, concrete example of something that has improved under the Conservative Party. They've been in power, they've had 100% of the power for 13 years. What has improved? I mean, so far, there's, you know, there's a lot of joke suggestions about uh, this and that, which we don't need to uh, concern ourselves with. I'm just looking for one. One solitary reason to uh, celebrate the Tories' rule for the last 13 years. I mean, a reason other than uh, the uh, spot and small boats <coughs> and uh, whatever else uh, it is that they come up with, uh, you know, the woke thing of the day to vote concert for vote con for, to vote for the conservative party at the next uh, general election i'm looking for it i'm looking for a reason to vote conservative at the next general election give me one just one reason <clears throat> that's not sarcastic hang on 
Oh, dear. 0345 6060973. I'm very, very ill, but I never really mentioned anything about it. Whinging and whining and moaning. Paul says, Nick, when it comes to children's education, Pink Floyd was wrong. It's not just another brick in the, raw, in the wall. It's a whole new classroom. I can't believe that education minister, that Nick Gibb fella, who I would never have been able to pick out from a lineup. I mean, I've heard the name, but uh, the, the, the face, unfamiliar. And he had the, he was in, um, he had the, like, the high hump with the, the uh, Inquisitors. They were asking him perfectly normal questions. I mean, uh, you know, is it a good idea to send children to uh, schools that are actually falling down? Is concrete falling on children's head a good thing? Yeah, you know, reasonable questions like this. And he got the hump, and he was uh, saying, well, you know, uh, at least our government is doing, you know, the Conservative Party is doing uh, much more than other countries. And no, they aren't. Germany is, uh, does not have its uh, news bulletins full of, A, hot sewage pouring onto their rivers and their beaches, and B, schools falling on their children's heads. And neither does uh, German news is it uh, full of uh, reports of um, 17 million people having to uh, wait uh, more than a year for uh, medical treatment. I don't hear German or French or Spanish or Italian or any of these uh, countries have um, huge waiting lists for perfectly ordinary uh, health treatment. I don't hear people in Europe complaining of the possibility of getting ill because that might you know, see them die for want of treatment. That's just here. It, <laughs> uh, absolutely everything is worse now, unless you can prove otherwise. Just give me one reason to celebrate Conservative rule for 13 years. I mean, it's, it's about to tick over to 14, isn't it? So we're looking at 14 years of Tory rule. What have they done? Because we know that they've spent a lot of money. They've spent £1.5 trillion. You know how much that is? No, neither do I. I haven't a clue. I mean, it's a number that's so vast, it uh, boggles my mind just to even contemplate it. But I'll try and look it up. I'll try and look up how many £5 notes stacked on top of each other it takes to make a trillion because that will put it into perspective. Too much blooming perspective, I doubt. I, I think. I'm not really thinking very well. <laughs> I'm very, very ill. Have, have I mentioned that? Stop whining. Uh, Mirtha Tidville. Hello, Jeff. <laughs> hey. Coffee in bed, uh, Nick? No, not really, no. <laughs> um, you'll be okay. Uh, you, you have mentioned one possible advantage. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, Fraulein Penny Mordant has proposed <laughs> has proposed that 16-year-olds come to a summer school, well, all over the country, yeah. dressed in khaki shorts, marching to a good order, and they sing wider still and wider, Tomo may your yeah. boundaries be, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. Tomorrow belongs to us, yeah. <laughs> and they can be addressed for an oath of allegiance by Cruella Braverman, oh my which God. is spelled with a double N on the, on the end. As, it, the whole thing is a possibility yeah. of a great thing to happen to the UK. Right. Well, uh, it's, it's just one step away from um, <laughs> flogging anyone under the age of 25, whether they deserve it or not. <laughs> Cold still flowing. Is it? Really? Yes. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> I mean, un under uh, the... Uh, well, of course, it's a very, very secret operation they've got there, and it can barely be seen by uh, anyone apart space. from... Apart, from apart space. from Yeah, from space, exactly. It's, a, <laughs> it's an open mine. They, they basically cut the top off a mountain, haven't they? No, no, no. They've created a mountain by digging, the, digging yeah, the hole. Yeah, yeah. The mountain's alongside the hole. It's just amazing, really. It's it's like somebody walked into a bank in broad daylight and said, uh, I'll have everything in the safe and um, I'm just going to stay here and wait while other deliveries of money come in and I'll take that too. I've, yeah. got all, I've got all day, I'll just wait. 
Yep. But and, and Sundance, they're there. They're up there. And the <laughs> and the and the police are just um, well, they just they don't have the time to uh, arrive. It's just well, a, amazing what what's did, happening over there. Yeah, but what they did do was come away to, to feel the callers of every single protester, protester. that ever came yeah, near the place. That's right. They were pretty active on that. Yeah, I bet they were. <laughs> it's a good anyway. Um, the, I, I'm looking forward to the camps that will be set up um, <laughs> because that obviously, obviously, it's going to be a tremendous benefit of yeah. the Conservatives mm-hmm. and possibly Brexit. Yeah. I, I have no idea. And anyone who thinks otherwise will have to be re-educated. I, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jeff. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Lewis texts, it might have been twice as worse if Labour were in power, but we will never know. Well, we know what happened uh, during the Blair Brown years, and they have a list of uh, achievements as long as your arm. Uh, which has uh, all been um, set aside because of uh, one... Um, uh, one... Um, how to put it? One uh, misstep. Should we put it like that? A misstep about weapons of uh, mass destruction. Everything else that they uh, achieved seems to have been uh, just um, brushed under the carpet because of that, and you just concentrate on that one thing. But they were responsible for a whole lot of things that we're still benefiting from now, that the the Tories haven't got around to dismantling. (coughs) Like like the minimum wage, for instance. All sorts of good things. What have the Tories done? Just looking for one thing, that's all. Just one. Let's have Tooting. Hello, Jan. Hi, hi, Nick, Jack. I'm sorry to hear you. You're not that well. Right, thank you. I don't know what what you what you do to make yourself feel better. Uh, well, it's been hanging around for uh, since last Saturday. Actually, it's almost a week now. The chesty thing. Pardon? <laughs> no, I mean I, a, a, a coffee thing, a cough. Yeah. Cough. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you try? Have you tried anything alternative? <laughs> Alternative to what? <laughs> Something that works. Orthodox. <laughs> Alternative to orthodox. Well, like what? Well, I, I mean, I, I'm not. You're talking I'm about not, humming, a, stretching, perhaps. I'm not a naturopath. You know, I yeah. don't. I'm not. I'm not saying naturopath. It's just that I, I was. Um, I don't know. There, there are certain remedies that that can work that. Like, like positive thinking, perhaps. Oh, oh no, we all, well, yeah, well, I mean, that helps. I that should helps try that. This, this doom, doom laden. Yeah. I could maybe doom. smile it away. <laughs> Have I tried happiness? Not lately. <laughs> Have a cup of happiness, and, um, mm. yeah, I, d- I don't know, um, well, well, we'll come back to that. Yes, I, we'll I, definitely I come know. back to that, assuming I live that long. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, don't. Don't Nick. That, that's that's um. If the news is grim enough, we don't want. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway. No, it, it, yeah. So well, I don't know. I I, I will. I, I'm I'm not. I, I I don't know exactly what's wrong. So I can't. I can't advise yeah, you. And no, I'm not well, don't that don't think about it. So you called in to tell me something positive about the conservative rule. You must have. Oh, done. oh yeah. Well, I've I've, I've called. <laughs> Just give me right. one good thing that they've managed to achieve in the last I didn't call about, 14 I didn't years. I call about that. I don't, I just think, Jan, I just never think. mind about that. This is a test now. You have to come up with one thing. Otherwise, you're in big trouble. Huge. One thing that yes. they've come up... One thing they've done... That's I, positive. I, I, uh, <laughs> yes? <laughs> yes? Listen, they, 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 oh, they you collapse. fail this test. No, well, anyway, I rang, I rang up about to, to make a couple of points about something because I, I'm like you in shock about what Everything. What happened with these for the with the schools? I mean, oh. it's, it's they've known for some time, and they've only just told the schools yeah. just mm. yesterday. You know, they've announced amazing. It. Well, they they've told some of them. Uh, others they're leaving in suspense. Well, I mean, it's it's it's, it's worse than it's worse than even I think you are picking up bits and things. It's like a third of all English schools are supposed to have a past their estimated life with this. Um, Type of building, yeah. so it's more than it's more than maybe we're seeing the tip of the iceberg with what they. Mm. Yeah, started. most definitely. If it's in schools and it's in hospitals and it's in libraries and it's in every public building it's that you scary. go in and out of on a daily basis. No, it's really it's really quite frightening that this this level of incompetence and, and hiding the information from the public is mm. a bit like the asbestos. 
Yeah, and well, then getting you know, the hump when you were questioned about that and saying, "Wow, we're doing more than another 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 fantasy country that I've just made up in my own mind." Yeah, I mean, look, it just says like that. That education secretary saying nothing is more important than this is what she said recently. Nothing is more important than making sure the children and staff are safe in schools, which is why we're yeah. acting on new evidence. Right, you see, that's new not evidence. True. It's not new evidence. It's like five it's years, known. at least five years old. I mean, they've known about the uh, this aerated concrete to stuff for decades. Yes, it's, it's, it's been being used since the 50s, so it's been used for a half a century. I mean, here's how stupid Jordan. it is. They knew that it had a shelf life when they built, when they put it in the first place. They knew it was the, it was a 30-year fix. Uh, uh, that's what they, that's, yeah, that, that's what oh came, with the, came with the product. It lasts for 30 years. <laughs> so they let the schools be built. I didn't, I didn't know that. I did, that for 30 years, they knew it was just so short-lived. As a, that is my understanding of the situation. That it oh was my a, God. It, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just are reduced to that. I mean, what else can you say? Oh, my God. And, and, and the thing is, is that, I mean, the, the, I found something, it's like, um, the, 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 there's 1.8 billion committed to, to keeping schools in good order for 23 to 24. Yeah. And, and this 15 billion was given over to school since 2015. Well, well I don't know what the Conservatives. Um, 15 billion is it 15, yeah, 15 billion. I'm not not ex missing a dot there between it. Yeah, 15 billion. But that's since 2015. Mm. You know, to keep schools in good working order. Well, yeah. what what in the well, God's name been done? <laughs> and what's so yeah. awful? What? Yeah, where's the money gone? Yeah, and and also there's the government saying that. They're, they're not going to fund any emergency temporary accommodation for this kids, yeah? yeah I'm glad yeah. I haven't got any kids that they need to go to school, you know, I mean... It's well, they don't go to chaos. state schools. You have to understand that, Jan. No, no, um, no private school child is going to be um, having masonry falling on their heads. They're going to be absolutely <laughs> certain of that. No government minister's child is going to be affected by this but, issue. But, Nick, Nick, what's so worrying is that yeah, maybe this is oh, this has to do with the Conservatives as well. Is that they they reduce funding to local government? So, so like when they when when they say that. The, the, the local government. I mean, the, the, the local governments have to have to provide alternative um, space, community space, yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. for for, to, for the kids, you know, who can't go to these collapsing buildings. Right. I mean, the thing is, the other thing is that because of the, it must be the conservative policy that's caused this crisis with local governments, because that's that's another aspect which which is pretty grim. Well, what they do is a lot the, of local the, local governments. Um, that local government. They ain't got no money. Yeah, well, that's the, yeah, that's that's the Tories' up. trick. They do it over and over again. They defund an institution yeah. and then blame that institution for not being able to cope. It's yeah, like they, they were... steal all your money and then oh, blame God. you for not having any money and then give you a tenor and call it a record investment. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they are. A lot of them are going, are going to go broke. I mean, a lot of them are going to be bankrupt local government yeah. because they, they can't they, the, the, the central government has cut their funding I'll, I'll say and it again, got, this entire yeah. country is like a car that has been left oh, uh, outside um, a, a place where it shouldn't have been and you come back and you see that it's up on bricks, someone's nicked the wheels they've uh, stolen the car seats, they've taken the wing mirrors <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and just for good measure, they they oh. in case somebody the owner comes back and can put it back together again, they pour sugar in the petrol tank to ruin it completely. That's where we um, are right now. What, they're, what, and they're, then... they're at the supermarket buying the sugar to put it in the tank because they know that they're, they're in all likelihood they're going to lose the next general election. So they're concreting in. All of this stuff that the Labour Party won't be able to undo, which is why Fishy Sunak uh, says we're going to open 100 new gas and oil wells. Well, uh, the big news is mm. that uh, companies aren't really falling over themselves to uh, open mm. new gas and oil wells because they won't uh, become profitable for 25 years. But the Labour Party are now going to be stuck with that for 25 years, and I bet the Tories blame mm. Labour for opening those very same oil and gas wells. Where, where, where is this country going? I mean, to tell you the truth, I mean, where is the world going? That's uh, the well, question. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's us going? and America. It's, it's us and the U.S. And we are following the U.S. The, everything this government does can be seen from <clears> the prism. What would Donald Trump do? 
everything. <laughs> And yeah, he's 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 crazy. And the world's got well. You 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 this many times. The world's gone crazy. Yeah. Oh, what's going? What's going on? Where people have lost their sense of? I don't know what to think. I, it's, um, and then they say there's an infection <laughs> yeah. around the corner. Yeah. Everything seems to be collapsing, and I'm yeah. getting. It's, That's it's, right. It's, and when it, it's almost an hour and a half in, and I'm still looking for one solitary thing that is better now than it was 13 years ago. What has the Tory party done with a trillion and a half pounds? Because that's what they have borrowed. What have they done with it? What is better? Jan, I'm going to have to go, but thanks for that. I mean, I'm genuinely after one thing. That's all. You'd think after almost 14 years of 100% of the power... Because they've been running this country like a dictatorship, because that is the essence of uh, the uh, parliamentary democracy, this screwed up system that we've got in this country, is that uh, with less, and by the way, of course, as usual, less than half the vote. They get 100% of the power with less than half the vote. And they're still whining that, um, oh, you know, it's uh, Jeremy Corbyn this, and lefty lawyers that, and woke liberals the other and there's always and there's the eu is punishing us and it, god it's always somebody else's fault it's just it's just 13 years of this <laughs> one thing that's it that's all and then we can call this show a success look it's smart yeah. for a new school year uh -huh. if you want some quality george has got the gear yeah. uniforms that are tough george is just what you need with reinforced knees Gonna hit those gates and play as much as I please. Quality school wear that stands the test of school time from three pounds only at Georgia Asda. In a poll of 40 Netmoms members, 98% would recommend Georgia Asda school wear to a friend. Selected as the stores subject to availability. Delivery charges may apply. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Hot air. <laughs> so I just looked up what a trillion looks like. Uh, a trillion... Now, we don't have a £100 note, so um, you're going to have to uh, imagine that we do. And, and to keep in mind that the Tories have spent £1.5 trillion pounds since they got into power. That's what they borrowed. So they borrowed the money, £1.5 trillion. Up to the point that they took power in 2010, we were one trillion pounds in debt. So it took until 2010, since the invention of money, to 2010 for us to borrow a trillion pounds. And then in 13 years, they, uh, they borrowed the same again and a half as much on top. A trillion pounds in hundred pound bills, assuming that we had a hundred pound note. Uh, well, one and a half trillion would be an entire football field covered in hundred pound notes to a depth of ten feet. They've spent that. What do we get? What do we get for it? Name one thing. Absolutely everything that we build in this country is uh, ten times the uh, initial estimate and uh, arrives twenty years too late. Or never. In fact, HS2 being a prime example. Everything we build in this country costs vastly more than it does anywhere else. I mean, I had uh, a list of them uh, last weekend. I, in my current condition, I can't remember exactly uh, what they were, but it was uh, something in the order of it takes uh, uh, ten times as much per mile to build a road in this country as it does in France. Why? Ten times as much. Why? Is uh, concrete more expensive here? Is uh, tarmac that much rarer here than it is in France? <laughs> Do we keep it in bank vaults? It's so expensive. Why does it cost ten times as much? Same with railways. Same with everything. What have they done with the money? Where's it gone? And, you know, people are bellyaching about £12.50. The, the, the vanishingly few number of people that are going to get caught out by you, Les. They're whining about £12. Oh, it's a tax on the poor. Well, never mind about £12.50. The, the, the Brexit that the uh, Tory parties have for fashion for is, is costing each and every one of us thousands of pounds a year. Why don't you concentrate on that? 
but no, oh, it's like this woke you lace charge. <laughs> it's just a distraction. Stop being so gullible. 0345 6060 973. Um, uh, East Yorkshire. Hello, Mike. Hi, Nick. Yeah, I'm going to put you out of your misery. Go on, then. Um, the one thing the Tories have done in 13 years since the power that leaves Britain better than it was before. Yes. Yeah. Hurt nobody, made a load of people happy. Nothing to do with money. They legalised gay marriage. They legalised gay marriage. Well, I think Tony Blair uh, started the uh, legal, the, um, uh, the, pr- the process of uh, changing the law as far as the LGB. And then there's a bunch of letters off that. I can never remember what they are. Uh, some of which I don't even know what they stand for. But, the, you know, the plus... Well, it seems a bit offensive to me. I mean, if you, Mike, were, uh, it were not covered by um, straight LGBT and they just lumped you in as a plus, would you be offended? Yeah, I think you probably would. <laughs> Why don't you get your own letter, Mike? That's what you would be thinking, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but that's the only thing I can think that Cameron actually brought in and did nobody any harm and helped people. And um, can't think of anything else. The only bit of humanity they've shown in all those years. But but the real reason I rang in was um, a bit more topical. Yeah. Um, Dory's left this week, oh. officially. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> Now, think of that. She was the one that looked at with puppy dog eyes to Johnson and, and oh. did nothing but praise him. Yeah. Whatever he did. Now we've got a new one. We've got Claire Coutinho, who is Sunak's Dorries. <laughs> when, when he moved chaps from energy, he yeah. put hair in. Yeah. Now, she's done nothing but praise him from it, the moment she became an MP, and she's now in the cabinet. Right. She, he's doing the same as Johnson did. He surrounded himself with a little group who he thinks are utterly loyal, form a square around the yes. Bill Mack. Is or, Johnson all over again? Yeah, or what would Donald Trump do? Yeah, it's a pattern. Yes. Everything is what would Donald Trump do? He would put somebody in charge of a department that A, a doesn't know anything about it, and B, is ideologically opposed to that department existing. Now, I don't know what uh, Grant uh, Shapp's uh, position on defence is, but let's assume that uh, he at least fulfills one of those uh, criteria in that he doesn't know anything about it. Yeah, and he's utterly loyal, and he's a, a good one to rule out in front of cameras. Oh, God, it, is it, he? It's all, it's all about sycophants. It's just about defending themselves. Here's what I've noticed. Here's what I've noticed. Here's what I've noticed about panel uh, programs, uh, uh, political panel programs with audiences. People aren't putting up with this anymore. You don't really get a sense of how angry people are, and it it takes the Tories aback when they hear the response to what they're saying because a Tory minister will, you know, learn spurious numbers and facts that they can just fill the air with uh, nonsense uh, and uh, numbers signifying nothing and then their their allotted time is up and they can saunter off to the next interview and spew out a load of spurious uh, numbers and uh, and uh, untrue facts on that one too but the the public aren't buying it anymore and I was, um, you know, you, you listen to uh, these things and the Tory minister was, uh, well, be asked, uh, you know, what about the state of the schools or the state of the NHS or uh, law and order? And they say, well, of course, our administration is spending record amounts and, and everything after that they <coughs> gets drowned out by booing. <laughs> and some, somebody else on the panel will just say a basic, simple truth and they will be cheered and, um, and have uh, applause ringing in their ears. I don't think this government actually gets how vastly unpopular uh, they are, nor how people just don't believe a blind word they say anymore. Well, no, I mean, government used to be about trying to act on behalf of the country. Yes. What government has become has been, what can we do to get us elected next time? Yeah, not, well, I'll... I'll, I'll s- bit of the country. No, of course not. I'll, I'll sum it up more succinctly. It used to be that the people who ran the country did it for the benefit of the people. Now, the people who run the country are doing it for the benefit of the people who are running the country. Yes, but I'm absolutely All right, Mike, got to go. Thanks for that. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Yeah! Dude!
Uh, by the way, it did occur to me as I was uh, talking to that last uh, chap, he did mention a Nadine Doris resignation letter, and I know that I teased the not the Nadine Doris resignation letter uh, last weekend because I had a world exclusive. I had access to the not the Nadine Doris resignation letter, and I kept saying, oh, I'm going to read it, I'm going to read it, I'm going to read it. And uh, I only got around to it after midnight. So there's probably uh, a lot of people who just sort of passed out, um, you know, for one reason or another. Booze. Uh, before it uh, actually got on the air. But if you want to hear that, then it is available both as the um, podcast to last Saturday's show, which is called Nick Abbott, The Whole Show Podcast. If you've got one of them stupid smart speakers, that's what you tell it to, to play. It's on Global Player, Nick Abbott, The Whole Show Podcast. Or there's a dedicated best of podcast, uh, mostly of old clips, but this week I did put that on the end of it. And that podcast is called The Nick Abbott Habit. You know, if you do a internet search on my name, Nick Abbott Podcast, I'm pretty sure all three will come up as though by magic. <laughs> And the third one, by the way, is a thing I do with Carol McGiffin. Yeah. Which I, I do think you will love, L-U-V. Romford. Hello, John. Is it me? Yes, John. Oh. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about what you said. And when you said uh, one good thing, mm. I think I can think one good thing is that it's not a reason to vote for them at the next election, but one good thing they've done is they might actually manage to Away the Conservative Party, and that no one will vote for him for the next election. <laughs> I mean, I'm being really optimistic, like, you know. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't start the celebrations too soon, John, no. because um, I think that the polling as it stands at the moment is going to get a lot narrower when we get to the actual day. Yeah, but I think when, with the COVID things, a lot of people took a lot of things really personally, didn't they? Like, you know, it did change things, yes. That's right. You know, when you think about Conservative being the party of small business, yeah, right. they actually shafted a lot of small businesses, didn't they? Like, you know, so probably didn't, won't forget or forgive them for because they lost loads of money, like, you know. I think that what, was, what has become apparent, money. yeah, what has become, become apparent over the last 13 years is that, that all of the things that the Tory parties used to tell us they were, has, it's become apparent that they just aren't. They're not the party of law and order. They're not the party of uh, the NHS is safe in their hands. They're not the party of conserving anything. What what do they actually conserve? It's like they're in business to ruin everything. Yeah, I've, you know, I think, like, when you think about them, like, um, you look at Liz Truss, yeah? I've, I've got a real issue with her. When you talk about her being a <laughs> prime minister, I don't really think you can cast her as a prime minister, really, because when you think about... She, she come in, I think the Queen sort of died two days later, didn't she? Like, you yeah. know, so there was about three weeks where the, there was no business, was there? Because I think that's all been sort of planned, isn't it? Didn't they say that like, London Bridge is going to fall down? Yes. And all these kind of things have all been been practised and sort of planned. So yeah. all she had to do, really, is turn up in black and, mm. and try not to laugh, like, you uh, know. Yeah, exactly, like, yes. you know? <laughs> Yeah, try not to and, uh, do like a, um... Oh, God, what's his name? Um, not, uh... Cordy. Eh? But Quasi, I think, was laughing at the funeral, wasn't he? Quasi Quarteng. Qua yeah, it? Crazy Quarteng. Yeah, he was yeah. Um, he, he was guffawing. Uh, he thought that something was extremely funny. We still haven't got to the bottom of what quite what that was. But, um, well, he's probably thinking about all the money that's probably going into oh, his bank. Like, yeah, you know, right. so what, um, you know, you're thinking about the one half yeah. trillion or whatever. But, um, you know, when I, when, I, when I think about it, I think... Um, you could could have called her a caretaking prime minister if she took any care. <laughs> any care, know, took absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but actually, you know, managed to smash everything, like you know. But the, the interesting thing about her is, like you know, she wrote this book saying that British people are lazy. Yeah, bone oil. Um, but when she actually got got kicked out, like you know, they they chucked her overboard because they mm. realised it wasn't going to go well. Right. I think she went on holiday because um, she she, <laughs> she thought. We'll go on a holiday in the six weeks of holidays or whatever they have, like the recess. Yes. Because uh, she didn't get it, like, you know, so they sort of give her a holiday and you think, you know, these people have more holidays than anyone, don't they? They're, they're, they're all just, on holiday now. I know. You know, it's amazing. And they think people are lazy. You know, it just, it just doesn't make sense. No, it uh, 
it, it just uh, nothing absolutely nothing makes sense anymore um, it's it's almost head spinning it's uh, such a confusing time that we're in right now and we're sort of looking for somebody to maybe just calm things down to um, to you know set us straight I don't know is Keir Starmer it I mean he certainly isn't um, a man with charisma he's not I mean, a show me. business type but maybe that's exactly what we want right now I don't know. I mean, for me, I, I don't know if we need like this uh, all or nothing, all one way. I think maybe some kind of coalition yes. with people trying to get their heads together and actually try and fix some of these problems. For the benefit I'm of... About, um, yeah, for the benefit you know. of uh, us. The little people. Yeah. Not leprechauns, yeah. All right, good work. Thanks, John. 0345 6060 973. And texts. Well, there's more food banks than in 2010. Well, that is true. A certain individ individual uh, would call that heartening. I don't know anything. Yeah, heartening. <laughs> heartening. Yeah, right. What would Jesus say? The absolute opposite of anything that Jacob Rees-Mogg would say in any given situation. Lewis texts, It might have been twice as worse if Labour were in power. Oh, no, I read that. <laughs> yeah. That old argument. If, I haven't actually heard that uh, tonight, but um, no doubt uh, people have been calling in with that, but they couldn't get in, couldn't get through. Well, it would have been much worse under Labour. Yeah, by what measure? Jerry says one single the tor one single thing that the Tories have achieved under Brexit, they have reclaimed a week of sun from Spain, which can even be used in Glasgow. That's right. Do Glaswegians have anything to wear in the sun? 0345 Uh Sandbatch. Hello, John. Hi. Uh, the one thing is, uh, the one thing Tories have done mm. is made the uh, wealthy wealthier. Yeah, I believe we we've, we've covered that one. The rich have got richer. Yes, but um, again, see, it's the sarcasm. We, no one can think of a single positive thing. Uh, nobody can. <laughs> and, and the thing is, uh, are we a, what kind of country are we? Um, a rat, uh, places in the other parts of the world, their buildings fall down. 2023, our government telling us that our schools could fall down. Yeah. In other uh, parts of the world, though, buildings fall down because of earthquakes or incoming missiles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, small stuff like that. Uh, and another thing is, you know, all these other gags that were in London. Yes, in yeah, London. still here. It's still there. It's still as wealthy as ever. Yeah, no doubt. Still and got their, Russian? still got their houses, still got their yachts, still got all of their money, and um, still uh, donating to the same political party. I bet. Well. There you go. Get rid of them. <laughs> uh, take them, the world off them. Say, um, thanks for living here. Now get lost. Yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, they got too much money, though. That's the problem. Is no, no, none of the uh, the current administration is going to tell anyone to get lost who is in the donor class. I mean, it's all about the money, honey. Do you think the Labour Party is in that level, in that category? The, the difference between the Tories and the Labour Party is that uh, the Tories make way more money, but they make it from vast amounts, from a relatively few number of really rich people. The Labour Party, on the other hand, makes a much more modest sum from tiny amounts from millions of people. Now, which party do you think, based on their funding model, is going to do most good for the most people. A party that is funded by about a dozen billionaires or a party that is funded by a, a million, uh, uh, you know, poor and, uh, yeah. and just about struggling to get by people. You're talking to a Labour voter and right. I completely agree with you. All right. Thanks a lot, John. But the uh, the right wing press will say, "Oh well, you know, you can't trust Labour because they're in hock work with the uh, unions." Well, yeah, but the unions represent millions of people. What do the people who um, who uh, 
from the Conservative Party. Who, who do they represent? Themselves. 0345 I mean, I can't... I, I don't have it in front of me, and um, I'm very... Have I mentioned that I'm very, very ill? Stop whining! I, so I'm just thinking off the top of my head. But I think something of the, uh, the, the top 20 biggest political donations, I think 18 are for the Tory party, one is for Labour, and it's way down the list, and uh, the other is for... Um, uh, it's uh, I can't even remember what this reform or or leave or you know what one of those uh, Nigel type parties. I'm a nutcase. I'm not necess necessarily saying that he has personally anything to do with it, but that that's the anomaly. All of the others are for the Conservative Party. Why would a billionaire give you a political party a hundred thousand pounds just because billionaires are just like that? They're just nice, generous people. <laughs> <laughs> if you believe that, I got a bridge I'd like to sell you. O three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Stefan Tex, one thing that's better? Well, what about life for their chums and donors? Will no one ever think of the poor shareholders? <laughs> yeah, well when will rich white people ever get a break? Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. He thinks he looks good in a bathing suit. He doesn't. Thanks, Donny. You're the best. 0345 6060973. Lucy says, I'm sure criminals would say that life has got better for them under the Tories with a lack of policemen available to stop them. Yeah, it has never been a better time to commit a crime. But again, with the sarcasm, come on, one positive thing. That's all we're looking for. It's, it's almost two hours have gone already, and we haven't had a single suggestion. There must be some. West Devon, hello, Rose. Oh, hello, Nick. Rose. Um, I ain't got one, I'm afraid. Oh, come on, Rose. No, I haven't got one. But I... Thinking of all that money, isn't it embezzlement of public funds? We'll never know because like there will never be an investigation. I can absolutely promise you this. Well, I can't, but I will bet um, mm. every stitch of clothing I'm wearing, I will walk out of this building butt naked. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> if I'm wrong about this. <laughs> there will be no investigation of where the money has went. There will be no investigation of the fraud that has been perpetrated uh, right under the nose of Fishy Sunak when he was a Chancellor. There will never be an investigation about the PPE, the hundreds of millions of pounds that have just vanished uh, into uh, thin air. There will never be an investigation about any of the... Uh, uh, of, of the in incredible criminality that has gone on under this administration. Nothing will be done. They have already got away with it. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. And the awful thing is, Nick, they're all such awful, trivial people. There's, there's nothing substantial about them. They haven't got decent brains, and they're, they're just spibs and charlatans. And we're having to talk about them all the time. Money I is mean, money and power. Well, it's, um, power is money, yeah. so it's just money. Money is, is as, as yes. deep as they go. That's all that concerns them. Which is incredible, yes, is. really, because they're all blooming millionaires. The ones that aren't millionaires are billionaires. How much money, how much money is enough? At what point do you think, well, I've got more than I could possibly spend in ten lifetimes if I stayed up all day long bashing my card onto the desk at Harrods, how much money is enough? And, and the answer is always, um, there is no such number. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't... Well, you can't imagine yourself into it, but I was really... I can't be bothered getting annoyed anymore. But that, <laughs> That's the thing. That's exactly really... where they want us to be. That's precisely what See, Trump did. He just lies and lies and lies until your head's spinning and you can't keep track of it anymore because you're trying to disprove well, the first lie, by which time he's already told you 20 other lies. And so it just becomes... A, it's just an assault on the senses. And you uh, can't take it anymore, so you think, oh, to hell with it, I'm not going to pay attention uh, now, which means that uh, they've won. Well, I don't know. I just, I just, you know, the whole idea that the truth doesn't matter anymore is one mm. of the things that, that's really, I see, I keep wanting to say the word beginning with P, really done my head in. 
and I'm just so fed up with it all, you know. Mm. And he said, I heard him say this dreadful Sunak person, <laughs> um, this thing about <laughs> you, that they're going to make it easier for developers to pollute. Yeah. So we can choose between houses mm -hmm. or important wetland areas with wading birds, peace and open skies. We can't have both. Yeah. What a load of absolute rubbish. And the way he's selling that is, oh, the, because we're free of yeah. the EU restrictions. That's which, right. of course, gets all the, the, the rabble baying. Uh, you know, they'll sacrifice anything yeah. in order to say, we're not having foreigners telling us what to do. I mean, it really is just absolutely... Well, the, 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 the lie is right at the beginning. They're, they're saying that the, well, the reason that we uh, couldn't uh, build the houses in the same number that they did in France and uh, Spain and Italy and uh, absolutely everywhere else uh, on Earth that is a comparable economy, the reason that we couldn't do that is because of the dreadful uh, European Union who have been uh, holding us back. But it's not the European Union that has been holding back house building. It's NIMBYism. It's Tories saying, well, we don't want any houses round our way. So, and and that will be the end of it. Yeah, but you see, then the RSPB is. Um, yeah, I agree with you. As, as we're not allowed to say that they've been lying. The RSPB has been. Yeah, the as, Royal Society uh, well, for somebody, the somebody the, in it yeah, really. The Royal Society for the that, Prevention um, of Birds. Prevention of Birds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might as well be now. Poor things. Yeah. They've been lying about their conservation plans. Yes. And uh, they've been told off for doing this. Now, nobody with... and You know, these, these wetlands that are going to be spoiled by pollution, that's just another terrible destruction of beauty going on. And these, I mean, these people are so shallow, Nick. I mean, nobody with substantial brain power believes that truth doesn't matter. We, we're just... I don't know, but I, I think, I think that there's just enough. There's, they just uh, yes. haven't got the intelligence to think any deeper. Just scheming. It's and just money, is, is all it is. That it, it's the, the reason... Occupied that, by them. Yeah, the reason that we... Um, that they don't need to think any deeper than that is because that is their only goal, it seems to me. That's the only thing that they're remotely interested in, which is why people like you and me do not matter, because we haven't got any. Yeah, but you see, you see the point I'm trying to make, that what sort of people have that as their goal in their lives? And the awful thing is that we've got to talk about the most trivial, silly salespeople on earth. Mm. You know, surely there are some human beings with real brains around we could be talking about, but <laughs> because they've occupied the country like an invading force, we have to talk about them. <laughs> yes. You know, we wouldn't give them the time of day if we met them in a pub or something. No. And neither would they us, because, as I say, we don't have any money. So they aren't remotely interested in us. Yeah, but what kind of a, a system are we running here, where it's like um, uh, being in Parliament? You can lie and lie and lie and lie, but you're not allowed to tell anyone that that person is lying. That's the crime. No. If you say that they're lying, they can lie as much as they like. And absolutely nothing will happen to them. That's fine. Well, but you can't say yeah, that they're lying. I was brought up. Mum and Dad, I mean, my father had many faults. But um, as I've mentioned before, he was a, he was, um, a scientist of, of the, the natural sciences. Hmm. And he, used, he, had, he said to me once, I never forgot it, he said, what I'm, what my, I don't know how he put it, my purpose is, what I'm, I'm searching for the truth. It's the truth that matters. And they also both used to say to us, you don't tell lies. Yeah. And well, you'll never get anywhere with that kind basic. of attitude. Never get anywhere well, with that kind of attitude, Rose. I mean, what is truth? You know, the... Well, you you can't handle the truth. As I... it, it's not. You see, life is life is simply not interesting if you're not looking for the truth in of what it's about. You know, what you see in nature, for instance, or whatever it might be. Well, well what we got if now is just, just uh, looking to scheme and plan just, and make money. It's, it's just the you're latest outrage. Yeah. Well, they're, they're not interested in boring. They're not interested in art. And they're not interested in science or truth or any of these things. It's just about the money, honey. That's all that concerns them which is incredible for a group of people sad, that have so much of it. Yeah, but this is the um, the Royal Society for the Prevention of, uh, bir of Birds. <laughs> <laughs> Liars, they tweet. Rishi Sunak, Michael Gove and Therese Coffey, which seems about correct to me. 
They yeah. said, you said you Absolutely. wouldn't weaken environmental protections, and yet that's just what you're doing. You lie and you lie and you lie again, and we've had enough. Yesterday, yes, your government announced the first reversal in environmental legislation for decades, and all while you pretend to be a government that cares about nature. It is now very patently clear oh. that you do not. And then they go on to Ooh. record some of the lies on the, the uh, environment, well, all of which uh, seem completely correct in every respect. And then they were forced, because... Uh, um, to uh, take back that tweet, they said, um, we are in a nature and climate emergency and that demands urgent action. The RSPB is deeply frustrated by the government's reneging on its environmental promises, but that frustration led us to attack the people, not the policy. This falls below the standard we set ourselves and for, what, and for that we apologise. To, to whom are you apologise? Those people? We will continue to campaign yeah, but- vigorously on behalf of nature, but we will always do so in a polite and considered uh, manner. Well, uh, to hell with that. There, to hell with that. Yeah, not quite. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, p- where does politeness get you? Nowhere. No, it is time to attack. And I thought that, that I, hadn't, I hadn't heard it in full like that. That was absolutely excellent, yes. And, Wasn't uh, it? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I th- it <laughs> chimed with me. And w- what I thought was uh, good was that they left the original tweet in place right underneath their apology. They didn't delete the tweet, as far as I have uh, saw uh, this afternoon. It was uh, still there, and uh, quite Good. right. Why shouldn't it be? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <sighs> it's exhausting, isn't it, Rose? But the thing is, don't be, well, don't be exhausted, don't be disheartened. Things can always get better. Well, <laughs> as the song <laughs> went. After a moment, you were going to say worse. <laughs> well, it could, they absolutely could get worse, yes. Because, um, you know, the, the polls could um, be upended. Just enough people could be persuaded that the problem is actually some uh, uh, damp, desperate people arriving on a boat. Uh, sp- uh, dinghy spotting will be back uh, just the moment that they come back from their holidays and they'll, uh, they'll reinvigorate that whole uh, we're being invaded uh, shtick. And um, the ULES thing, uh, which means that the next war on woke is uh, breathable air. Apparently, that's lefty. If you, <laughs> to, if you to be to to want to breathe good air is left wing lefty activism. I think they'll probably call it. So that's what we got, uh, Rose. It's going to get a lot worse from now until the next general election. It'll be the worst election cycle in history. We will be matching the uh, Americans for the amount of uh, untruths and misinformation that is coming our way. Be on high alert, because this time around, they'll have all of that artificial intelligence stuff, and things that will not be real will look real. So question everything. Maybe somebody will shoot them. Oh, now, with a camera, and catch them and... No, no, we're gone. No, no, don't say that. (laughs) With a camera, Sorry. with a camera, and catch them at their worst. Yeah, uh, that's probably what you meant. Thanks a lot, Rose. <laughs> oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Catch them while they're uh, trying to eat something. <laughs> Nobody looks good caught while you're trying to eat something. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Text eight four eight five zero. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Come on, people. We've got an hour left. In 13 years, name one thing that's better. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. This is LBC from Global Leading Britain's Conversation with Nick Abbott. Right, so what are we doing? Given we are doing a radio show, but it does remind me that I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Yeah. Now, uh, if you want us to uh, look at a problem, because that's the essence of the podcast, we try to solve people's problems. Um, we spend much of the time laughing our faces off, but uh, we have been making a special effort to get through as many problems as uh, we can just lately. Um, if you want us to have a bash at your problem, then you're going to have to tell us what it is. And the email address is nickandcarol at global.com, N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com. Uh, if you send it in, you have to prepare 
to be totally satisfied. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? Oh, right, yeah. Uh, if you um, wish to be amused, I think it'd be right up your alley. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? You'll love it. Right then, who's been waiting the longest? Morden. Hello, Paul. Hello, Nick. Uh, hope, you're, hope you're well. Hope your uh, throat's getting a bit better. Um, I'm, I've just been given a, a tincture, a, a lemon and a honey concoction, which um, seems to be uh, just the thing. Oh, good. I'm going to... Did you get rid of the glass? <laughs> I think so, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> it, I was either imagining it or it, it, uh, it passed without incident. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, Nick, I'm, I'm sorry to, uh, to be a party pooper. I think I've got five, maybe, good things that may have happened. All right. That's not exactly... That's one. That's not even one every two years, but go on. <laughs> OK, the first thing um, you could man from... Uh, Mike from Yorkshire mentioned, which was, which was um, uh, legalising gay marriage. Um, I think that was a fantastic thing, um, a progressive thing, which is not normally something progressive and, and the Tories having given the same sentence, I suppose, but that, yeah. that was a great thing. Almost as though they did it by uh, accident. I think it was um, David Cameron, but he was just extending the uh, the uh, gay rights or the LGBT, etc., and so on, rights that uh, were um, uh, expanded under Blair and uh, Brown. But I suspect that uh, it happened under the Tories because... The, the, a, a particular Tory politician was pushing it because either they were or their close personal friends were in want of um, uh, were gay and in want of being married. I see. Uh, cynical, but um, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, you tell a point of view, I guess it's, it's, it's right. definitely a good okay. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, the second thing um, was uh, decarbonisation. Um, it was under the coalition and particularly under Ed Davey because he was the energy minister. Um, and they started uh, decarbonising in a massive way by building absolutely shed loads of uh, wind turbines. Um, they were initially building on uh, on onshore ones as well, but then the NIMBYs kind of kicked in and they were producing them here. And um, I think eventually the Tories messed it up by cutting um, the subsidies uh, for which so they did ruin it. But initially, at least they have started to decarbonise. I think that was a, that was a good thing. Um, well, who started the offshore wind farms? Because they, they didn't get built in the last 13 years. Um, do they start getting built in, with, uh, in earnest, though, I suppose? Um, OK, so they built more of them. Um, I'm not sure that that's uh, so much of a win, but OK, perhaps. OK. Um, but, on, but on the other hand, they, they also um, allowed... Uh, oil and gas extraction and paid the companies to do it. I mean, we actually give in subsidies more to the oil and gas companies than they pay in tax. <laughs> that's, mm. I think that's actually true. You believe that? We, poor dopes who pay taxes, actually give to trillion dollar industries more in bonuses and, um, uh, and tax breaks than they actually pay in tax. So I think that uh, maybe the uh, this uh, decarbonisation thing of which you speak might be uh, um, mm. a little bit t t too far. What else you got? Um, okay, and um, the third one. Uh, I think Boris showed leadership um, in the Ukraine uh, oh, war. Shut Admittedly, up. leadership. <laughs> what? B b the, the, the man who um, never refused a ruble. Are you kidding? <laughs> Um, okay, in, in, in kind of um, in kind of like opposition with the French, um, who are kind of generally very saying no. I think even oh, I don't even have a go. They at Corbyn. actually had, had man, uh, they actually had a group, uh, the Tory Friends of the Russians. Please, so we'll oh, what, skip over that. What happened to the investigation? Was uh, they gonna, wasn't. Well, the investigation concluded, um, and um, I can't remember what the chap's name was, but the uh, the, the panel concluded that, in uh, in their view, that the only reason that the government did not find uh, Russian collusion uh, or interference in the um, uh, in the Brexit referendum was because they did not look for it. Indeed. Um, I would hope that that can be reopened once we get yeah. a new government. Forget it. I really do. N nothing of the sort will ever happen. 
Um, I will say that Boris did stand up for Ukraine, in, you know, in face of um, opposition. Um, I, I really don't like giving him any kudos. No. I, I really don't. But. And I don't think he deserves it. I don't think he did anything of the sort. I think he used um, Ukraine as an excuse to leave the country whenever, it, whenever things got too hot for him here. I, yeah. His uh, interest in uh, Ukraine is um, just as much as his interest is in uh, Uxbridge. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Don't um, believe it for a second. The, the other two I've got are probably um, um, not intentional, they're non direct. But one was uh, Liz Truss and the whole idea of trickle down economics. Oh. Um, that has changed. I know, I know it's the discourse. I think now that it's now under, generally understood by most people that the idea of trickling economics just isn't going to hold water. Paul, you all. think those people have gone away? They, they, oh, haven't, no. they haven't gone oh, anywhere. No. They, they still think that they're right. They still think that um, the money uh, is uh, will come their way if they can only uh, enact those uh, policies uh, again. They're itching to try it for the, the long term. They oh, think that the only reason it didn't work is because they didn't do enough of it. True, but I think with the general population, I think I mean, uh, I think they're more aware of next time they play promise tax cuts or whatever it is for, for the rich, and it'll hopefully come their way. Rather as opposed to building from the bottom up, I don't think it's, it's going to hold water anymore. I think people are, are onto it. And my, my fifth point, by extension, is yeah, um, is that they, they basically lost the, um, the reputation for um, economic competence and generally, as you say, you know who. Really? Because uh, I'm not sure that people, the, the general public, actually pay attention to any of that. And, uh, and I don't think that they could uh, sense what uh, trickle-down economics uh, is or could could spot it when it's happening right in front of them. Because um, uh, politicians will just cover it up and call it something else. They, they, oh, well, we, we've got to uh, reward the uh, the wealth creators, or, or otherwise they'll up sticks and go to another country, or... Uh, or they, they'll just bury it in the accounts and uh, and release it on a, a good news day. They will try. They will, yeah, they will try and do that. But every single time someone looks at their mortgage and while they're struggling, they'll think of Liz Truss. No, um, so they, but you know what? They won't. They'll think of well, it's because there's blooming people. They come over here on dinghies and they get put <laughs> up in five star. They will. They put five star hotels and they got all, all this uh, food provided for them and they uh, they get a uh, free gold watch and uh, a Rolls Royce. I've read it in uh, in the papers. That's what they will think. They'll think exactly what the right wing press will tell them to think. I, th I, I think you uh, overestimate the the nows of the general public. It is hope, I suppose. I, well, I've got zero out of five, which is probably no, the no, same amount. No, no, I'm I've... not sure that you got zero out of five. You got <laughs> you got maybe a half with the gay marriage thing. Although there's a lot of people who would say that that's a, a terrible thing, and there's nothing to be celebrating about. And um, I think maybe you got uh, a half on one of the others, but two halves don't make a hole in this game, Paul. That's true. It's like my <laughs> RE GCSE all over again. Yeah, it's a it's a C. It's a it's a solid uh, it, it's a solid pass. But no, you know, nothing, <laughs> nothing to celebrate. All right, good okay, work. Thanks a lot, Paul. Ta-da. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Lucy says, "I'm sure criminals would say that life has got better for them under the Tories with a lack of policemen available to stop them." Did I read that one already? Lee says, uh, "I bet you can't name a single Tory politician who was stamped on a duckling." See, they're not so bad, so maybe you need to re-evaluate your opinion, says Lee. Well, that is a good point. I don't have uh, actual physical evidence of any duckling stamping by any of the current regime. Good point there, Lee. Mulburn, Judy. Oh, good God. Judy. Uh, uh, oh, Ju hang on. Judy, oh. Judy, Judy. Oh, uh, Judy, Judy. I can... Oh, phew. I'm sorry, this is probably why you leave me to the last, but do you know I've been holding for nearly two hours? Whinging and whining and moaning. You have not. Yeah, I have, honestly. It was about ten past twelve. Yeah, I, okay. I, know, I know what time it is, but on my screen here, it doesn't say you've been holding for anything like that amount of time. No, I have, but anyway, I have wouldn't you? like it. Well, I'm, I, I am you, very, okay. very sorry. I am very um, sorry that I screwed up. <laughs> totally screwed up. <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. The only trouble is, as more red wine gets quaffed, and as I said, sort of, <laughs> yes, as I booze. rework, yeah, yeah booze, <laughs> exactly. And I rework what I was intentionally going to say. Now there's hundreds of bits of paper all over the bed, mm. uh, all over the bed, thinking, 
Yeah, okay. Um, okay, look, I'll, I'll have a go. Um, now, I think my first thing, and I remember this to begin with, which was you didn't say benefit whom. Right. See, I think well, that's a bit relative. Well, because, it, yes. Quite right. You know, that is, that is a good point. I, I just assumed that people would understand that I mean for, to our benefit, the benefit of the nation, most of the people. I mean, right. they've done a lot that benefits them personally and benefits their donors and their friends and, uh, you know, uh, people they hang out with and all of that. So there's a, a, a small number of people who've done fantastically well. But that's not I who know. I'm talking and about. I know, I know you know that. And yeah. I know that actually at this moment that actually... Mr. Reese Mogg is not necessarily listening to this program. My view is is no. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I know what you meant, really. Uh, but uh, so I'm not going to I'm not going to try and do the sort of irony. I'm going to say one plus. Mm. I'm going to say quite a few not so pluses, but um, the pension triple lock. Oh. Okay. Right. Right. Now, I'm yes. 70. Right. I'm 70 a fortnight ago. You S don't need to sing happy birthday. <laughs> you just have to. You couldn't stop yourself. Couldn't help myself, no. I know. Um, uh, and I have to say, even though I've worked since, oh, I don't know, since about 16 and a half, mm. and you'll be pleased to know I'm not going to tell you why. I mean, you know, I've worked in various things all over the place, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's worth a subject another time, and I'll tell you all about it, but uh, I end up having no uh, work pension. So now I have to live on a state pension. Mm. It's genuinely appreciated. And the reason I'm saying it, I'm saying it because I think it's important, is I think and I understand entirely because I'm surrounded in my village by people that live in very large houses and they've got huge pensions and they have a state pension. And, you know, why are the... Yeah, I get that. It's another story. But I just think it's important to suggest that some people need it. Um, yes, anyway. no, that's, that is quite right. However, what, what is being locked in is a very, very small amount. I mean, it's not really anything to celebrate. It's it's one of the 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 meanest state pensions in all of Europe. Oh, absolutely! I mean, it's appalling, absolutely appalling. Uh, I think it works out as two hundred and fifty. Uh, I'm being absolutely honest. Uh, it's two hundred and fifty quid a week. Yeah, you um, know what they get in Spain? Two thousand six hundred a month. Really? Two thousand six hundred and seventeen. Uh, oh, this is euros. 2,617 euros, 53 cents per month in Spain. You see, this is what I'm talking about. We, we get so used to, um, to uh, earning, to like scrabbling by on such a tiny amount that we're grateful for uh, anything that we get overly grateful, pitifully, actually. Well, I've just I've proved for, your point by saying I'm crumb. grateful for the triple lock. Right. I have no other income. Right, but it's a lock on something that is a very small amount compared to other competitive countries. I mean, you, you, uh, well, it's just a rubbish system. You put your money in, they take yep. it from you, you have no choice. So it's an insurance based system. They take the money and they're supposed to, as uh, a, a company that um, handles, uh, you know, uh, pensions would, mm -hmm. they invest it on your behalf and then you mm -hmm. reap the benefit at the end. Well, I don't know where the hell the money went because, uh, you know, all the, all the cash that you put in there over that period of time uh, yeah, invested in... in if you yep. just invested it in the FTSE 100 and just left it alone for it to go up and down with the wind then you'd be uh, undoubtedly better off than you are now relying on the uh, government pension. So it seems to me that they're, they're calling it a good thing, but you're actually being ripped off again. Yeah, totally. Um, totally. And I, and I think... Um, I mean, OK, we can say the life expectancy of the rich has increased, but we know all that anyway. And it's, it's yeah, again, it's, it's minor rubbish. Although, really. actually, lately... 
the uh, life expectancy has decreased in this country. And it's not just because of COVID. It was decreasing before then. And the specific reason for that is that people can't get treated on the NHS anymore. And so exactly. life is becoming exactly. shorter and meaner and poorer. <laughs> yeah, but it is. I mean, it truly is. And, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's a great sadness that the majority of people knew know exactly what it means no longer understand what the word woke means. No. Well, so they're using it as a... the Daily a... Fail and the Daily Express, and I call Express EX hyphen press, because God knows Ex they're not... Press. They're not, they're not <laughs> a newspaper. Mm. Um, but, I mean, they have pushed this... Yes, there are some things that actually get on my... I won't say the word uh, at times, and I can be a little bit bored with... with with certain areas, but mm. ultimately, generally, we both know that woke means actually genuinely looking out for people and actually trying to equate people as valuable and, and yeah. quality and everything else. I mean, being open to the concerns uh, of those less fortunate than you are, and uh, and somehow that is a weakness now. I mean, what would Jesus do? Uh, he'd probably die on a cross, I should think. <laughs> no, because... <laughs> no, Jesus would be uh, vilified by the press for being woke. Oh, yeah, oh, sorry, of course. Oh, yes, he would. And actually sharing all that wine and everything else. Oh. Actually, he'd, he'd probably get it, you know... A, a lefty well. activist. A lefty activist yeah. that, you know, breaks his bread. I mean, you know. And then <laughs> the other thing is, um, the, what worries me, and I think somebody else mentioned this, actually, it was a very uh, interesting lady on a, a, I don't know, a couple of calls ago, uh, but actually I, I feel that the population are getting so disenchanted and apathetic mm. that they believe nothing that they do will make any difference. Yeah, well, it's being and beaten so you us. said you you said, quite rightly, they got you exactly where you want them. Yeah. Uh, and the moment you worrying. stop paying attention and you just can't take it anymore, and you think, "Oh, t and I, you know, I've, I've, I've had it up to my eyeballs. Just get on with it. I don't care." That's the what. That's exactly what they're after. They want yeah, you. Exactly. They want you not to go out and vote at the next election. Yeah, that is no what point. they want. And in fact, um, I, I bet that that is one of the. Uh, the, the main um, thrusts of the forthcoming artificial intelligence-led social media campaign is to try to make people so, um, so devoid of, um, uh, of hope that they just don't go out and vote. I bet that is exactly what the plan is. Yeah, Judy, I've got to go, but um, uh, but thanks for that, and I'm I am really genuinely sorry that you waited so long. I'm m most surprised. Cheers, my dear. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. What's he got to be depressed about? Uh, well, mostly that it's uh, almost two and a half hours in, and I haven't got one single solid good thing that the Conservative Party have done after being in power for over 13 years, having had 100% of the power for over 13 years, and we haven't come up with one single solid good thing that everybody can agree is better now than it was then. <laughs> Incredible. Dollar, Ellie. Oh, yes, <clears throat> Nick, I'm sorry, we've got a frog in my throat. <laughs> they have actually never had it so good. Um, this sort of systematically extreme right wing agenda torn the country apart and made sure that they take care of their own donor friends and supporters. That's all they're interested in. They're we not have obviously never had it, had so, it so good. good. I'm afraid so, and that be the reality. As you say, the only thing you can do is get out and vote and vote them out, yeah. because they um, they have they they've left it behind, as you say. Well, you must they're, you they're must destroy it. You must 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 vote. Whether which way you vote is uh, up to you, but you must yes. vote because they will want you to stay at home. It oh, will absolutely. benefit them for you to stay at home. No, they want people so worn down. They want people so apathetic mm. and uh, kind of helpless. Yes. This is the brainwashing that they actually do through the right-wing press yep. and through all their friends. 
and the lies, the lies that they t- obtained Brexit, the vote for, um, should really, there, uh, there possibly could be a legal case, but I don't know, no. that if you deceive somebody or scam them, mm. that actually you could take them to court so that obviously you wouldn't have to wait 10 years to get back into the EU. You could do it that they'd actually... Um, committed fraud. They are criminals and uh, it's only a matter of time because there's so many people that are really hurting and angry out there that we must end Tory rule forever. And the only way at your end is proportional representation in Scotland is independence. Proportional representation. But unfortunately, when a party gets into power, they will themselves have 100% of the power and they won't want to give that up and I think that's yes. where Keir Starmer's uh, head is. He uh, has uh, an inkling that he's going to get 100% of the power and he won't want to give that up to uh, any uh, smelly crusties from the Greenies or the Lib Dems or any of those uh, uh, lefty uh, activist types. Yeah, but if they can think on a bigger scale, it would actually be um, seen as quite a hero if he actually went ahead and do that and they stop yeah. thinking about themselves and thinking about the general... Uh, improvement of the whole of the country for everyone in it. Right, well, you know, because I, I think that ship sailed, Ellie. That's not going to happen. Yeah, well, politicians, so stuck with you it. know. Um, I'm afraid not. No, you just get out there and vote and you keep on fighting. Exactly, yeah. Don't give up. Thanks a lot, Ellie. Cheers, my dear. 0345 6060 973. Never give up. Brian texts, I'm no fan of this rotten government, but I'll take up your challenge to name one good thing. They changed the driving license so that you no longer have to get another category of license to pull a caravan, which meant that I could get a folding camper. The only problem is that they've screwed the economy so much that I can't afford the petrol to tow it. Mind you, it's a place to sleep when I can't afford the mortgage anymore, says Brian. Always looking on the bright side of life. H-A-P-P-Y-ness. That's his watchword. Dartford. Hello, Claire. Hello. Claire. Hello. Claire. Is that Nick? Yes, Claire. <laughs> I have thought of a couple of things. Right. They're probably all wrong. <laughs> and I know, in fact, one is. <laughs> okay. But you know the Darford Crossing? Yes. The tunnel you mm-hmm. went under? Yes. And it was, the benefit was that the, the signs were back in yards. Oh. Um. If you remember. Well, I, have they actually changed them? I, I seriously doubt that um, anybody took smug uh, seriously and went and changed the signs into from metres to yards. I mean, what would be the point? No. Well, I was saying to your producer that I'd done further investigation. Yeah. I did some homework. Wow. And, in fact, the tunnel you went under was, mm. what, I think, the first tunnel, and they never even bothered changing the signs in the first place. Right. Oh. <laughs> and from, the other thing from I yards to is, meters you mean or yeah the they, they've right. put it in yards they never bother changing it no because who's going to see it underground exactly who's paying attention so, you, so you're why bother too busy why trying bother? not to crash into the walls but I found a positive thing yes that a Tory peer received 330,000 to re- on his private estate to fix the potholes in his road <laughs> from the levelling up fund yeah, that's right that, that Henry Nicholas Viscount blah blah. So that was a good thing. That was a decent thing, wasn't it? For, yeah, for Sussex. A, a Viscount um, got uh, a six-figure sum from us, the poor dopes who pay taxes. Yeah. Yeah, which was really nice. That's mm-hmm. for that thing. Oh, and the crown apparently is back on the pint glass, isn't it? <laughs> wasn't that a bonus? <laughs> we could have the crown. I think that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, it wasn't a bonus at all, because we could have had anything we wanted on the pint glass, yes. as you'll Bones know. If you've, yeah, yeah, anything. If, uh, if you've been and asked for one of those pints of lager that comes with its own glass, as many of them do these days, yes. then you can have <laughs> anything you want on there. You can have a uh, crown, you can have a uh, tiara, you can uh, have a paper hat. Doesn't matter. Uh, two other bonuses. Yeah. Didn't we have a nice state funeral and didn't we have a nice coronation? Well, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that didn't have anything to do with them. If it had no. done, then uh, <laughs> we would have uh, buried but the wrong we paid person. For it. Yeah. We paid. For it. <laughs> we did, yeah. We pay yeah. and we pay and we pay. Here, Claire, I've got to go, but thanks for that. 0345 
you can text 84850, email nickA at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Uh, half an hour to go, can we come up with one single, solitary, concrete example of a thing that is better now than it was before the Tories took power almost 14 years ago? Leading Britain's conversation, Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. I've been waiting for you. Hello? Yes, I've been waiting for a caller in Nottingham. Cheryl. Yes, hello. Can you hear me all right? Yes, Cheryl. Um, I've got four things, good things that the Tories have done. Lay it on us, baby. From 13 years of Tory literal. Carry on. Number one, a few weeks ago, Nigel Farage left his garage to say that Brexit has not worked. Can you remember that? <laughs> he left his garage to say that Brexit does not work. Brexit's going yes, great. Yes, it was on the news. Yeah. Number two, Madam Theresa May said that hostile environment were the wrong words to use. And that was in today's Daily Mirror. I thought that she was the architect of the hostile environment. She was, but she has admitted it was the wrong words to use. Right. If you read the Daily, um, Daily Mirror today, it was in there. Number okay, two then. and four, number three and four together. Yeah, Bojo has gone, and so has that mad woman, Nadine Doris. <laughs> a mad might be stretching it a bit, but uh, Boris and Nadine appear to have uh, gone from our lives to a, a certain extent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. So that is a positive. <laughs> yes, I love it when you do that. When you bring that voice on, because <laughs> <laughs> it just the um. The other thing is about Ukraine. Hmm. I rather think that Boris Johnson did it to um, pump up his own ego. Boris Johnson, to me, does not appear to be a person who does anything that will not immediately benefit Boris Johnson. So, exactly. to, so to suggest that he is the friend of the uh, Ukrainians, um, well, I would uh, take that uh, with um, uh, a pinch a large of, pinch of salt. salt. Yeah. But that's, that's how I see Boris Johnson anyway. And he's gone, thankfully. Well, he's... he's I, don't think, go on. I, don't think, I don't think they're going to allow him back into the Parliament building anyway. <laughs> Seriously, after the last um, Privilege Committee, had, the Privilege Committee he had to face, the last one on... Well, and they, 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 I would they, be, they, I'd be they, amazed they, if he wasn't sucking up the subsidised food and drink... Uh, uh, the, within uh, within the week. If he could, I don't think they'd allow him in the Parliament or in the um, MP's canteen and restaurant to do that. I don't think he's going to be allowed in. I, I bet he will be allowed in, Cheryl. I bet there's absolutely no way in which that he won't be uh, allowed to do anything he blooming well likes from now until the end of time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I know. But no, um, the one good thing is I'm still alive because I was almost killed by Tory disability cut right. on two occasions. Well, that is a benefit then. Yeah. I guess. Yes. They, I, I, um, I'm, still alive. I'm still alive and I found out how I can um, challenge them um, in court. And I won five appeals against them because they kept on telling lies about my health. Huh. I have cerebral palsy, which can be very painful, mm. and they kept on telling me to go to work. But I've I've challenged it five times over a period of five years. But as a result, I tried to commit suicide in 2011. They hadn't even been in power for a year then. Right. Well, um, they they keep aiming at you, Cheryl, but they keep missing. So I guess that is yeah. a benefit. They they got uh, a bad aim. All right. Yep, thanks well, for that, uh, Cheryl, and I wish you all the best. Cheers, my dear. Oh three four five. 6060973. Lydia texts, at least Grant Shapps has been kept off the streets. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> that is a good point. That's a benefit for all of us. Can you imagine the trouble that Grant Shapps would have got into if he hadn't had uh, a hobby running uh, various uh, government departments? Which one is he uh, in uh, at the moment? I mean, uh, this afternoon he was at the uh, Ministry of Defence. Which one is he in now? Is he still there? Still there. Wow, made a whole day. Well done, Grant. Very good. 0345 <coughs> 6060973. Liverpool. Hello, Vincent. Hello, Nick. How are you, mate? All right, thanks. Uh, to be honest, I've got to hang myself just listening to that one talking, uh, to be honest. 
Hey, do you know what? I want to hit you put the pension age up to 70 for, for, for the fellas to be honest. I've got a long way to go, but I want to hear, did they do that? Um, well, the thing is that people are living longer, so I can understand that, uh, you know, it's like most of the money of most of the uh, countries in the first well, world is going to you're keep... You're not far away, but how, how to, did he do that, though? 70 years of age, to be honest. When you when you finish your pension, you, you just want to enjoy yourself, don't you? At 70 years of age, you couldn't do nothing, could you, realistically, Nick? <laughs> well, it depends, not, it yeah, depends yeah. how you've kept yourself. Oh, to be honest, hey... To be honest, Nick, you're not far away yourself. Oh, but to be honest, you couldn't, could you? No, I don't think that's true. It depends how you've kept yourself, Vincent. It depends how lucky no, you've been. Be honest, some no. some people are bouncing around when they're 70 years old and they're uh, they're younger and uh, more uh, full of vim and vigour than they were when they were 17. Nick, before I go, give us an L to our young fella. Lost. An L? L? <laughs> Am I missing something? I think so. I think he was uh, a listener with material. Oh no! Uh, he didn't quite. Um, it didn't quite come over. Probably all my fault. Vancouver. Hello, Nick. Oh, hi, Nick. <laughs> I have an analogy for you, and it, it leads into your 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 question about what the Tories have done. That's yes, been good. Please. I live in Vancouver, where we have earthquakes, and our education ministry decided in 2015 that there was a slight chance in the event of a bad earthquake our schools might fall on the little kiddies' heads and cause them much damage and pain and death. Yeah. And so over the last sort of eight years, they've spent $3 billion slowly but surely repairing, structurally upgrading, replacing, and generally making sure that the little kiddies don't die in the event of an earthquake. Mm. And there's, uh, it, the money has been spent and the schools have been fixed. They've done 200. They've got another 100 halfway through and it'll all be done in a year or so's time. And there's no disruption to the education process or risk to the little kiddies. And I can't help look at this concrete thing and think, you're going to spend exactly the same amount of money that you would have spent if you'd started 10 years ago and got the job done, mm. but at vast disruption because the Tories are so utterly inept and devoid of administrative talent that alone anything else. I don't know. You see, I don't buy this inept part. I, I just don't think that a, a party can be that inept 13 years running. Because they keep making the same mistakes. If if they are indeed mistakes, then they keep making the same ones over and over again. I don't think these are stupid people. I think it's worse than that. Well, I would agree with you, but here's where I think the benefit is. I blame all of this on Thatcherism myself. Yeah. I think this all goes back to the days when Margaret Thatcher basically said, you know what? The whole concept of the state and government and all of that is rubbish. Mm -hmm. We should model this country on, on Adam Smith's sort of mythical 17th century Scottish village. <laughs> and you guys are all on your own. Yes. And that's, you know, and, and, what and we if really you don't need make is, enough money, yeah. die quietly. Right. And what we really, exactly, yeah. What we really need is, uh, is no regulations for corporations because uh, they should self-regulate corporations. And uh, by that method... Uh, people will be uh, happier and live longer. And, of course, we blooming well won't because corporations don't have a soul. They don't have uh, any uh, emotions. They're like sharks. They just keep moving forward and eat everything in their way. Yes, yes. But this is the good thing. I think maybe, just maybe, the voters of the UK at this point now <laughs> realise <laughs> that it was all a vast con and that all of this Thatcherist neoliberalism is rubbish and doesn't work. That's what I'm hoping. Well, the, I tell the, you what, the, I think the, the thing that might actually bring it home to people is the water and the sewage thing. Because yes. there's because people aren't that great around sewage. Sewage is not human beings' favourite uh, surroundings. Even if you're far right-wing, it's a bit hard to imagine that the furthest right-wing person would be okay having sewage all over the beach that they want to spend their holidays on or the river that they are uh, fishing in or want to swim in or uh, you know like or, or sewage like running down the streets uh, we're not really good with that regardless of what your political affiliations so i think that that may be the thing that does for them that actually really brings it home this whole 
uh, privatization scam, for that is certainly what it is. We are the only country in the world stupid enough to have sold off all of our water to private corporations. Well, I would agree with you. And the reality is you've paid for all of the services that other countries take for granted anyway. You haven't saved any money doing this. You've paid the water board just the same amount. It's just they've trousered it. Yes, exactly. (laughs) But it's way way worse than that. It, it, yeah, in any other country, it goes to um, <coughs> to I'm improving like, the... <coughs> fixing things and making sure that poop doesn't run into the river. Yeah. <laughs> and in, in England, it goes to some shareholder. In Ontario, of all places. I mean, our teachers, thank you for your largesse. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yes. laughs> we wouldn't do that here to ourselves, but no. if you want to swim in poop and we take the profits, we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Nick. Cheers for that. 0345 6060 973. <clears throat> but it's worse than that. I mean, the amount of money that we spend on uh, water is a similar amount that uh, other citizens in other countries uh, also spend. But it's just that the money that they finance, their, uh, that they uh, give to their water companies, is spent on improving the infrastructure because that's just a normal thing to do. But in this country, not only does that not happen, has that not happened, it's way worse than that. Because here's, here's the scam, and and I think that the water thing is, is so cl- clear, ironically, dirty water is such a clear issue that it really resonates with people. And it doesn't matter what your uh, political affiliations are, no one likes it. Nobody. I mean, you can't make a woke issue out of sewage in your river or on your beach, can you? You're not a lefty activist if you don't like being up to your knees in sewage. So it's impossible for the right wing to actually make this into a woke issue. It won't work. The thing is that water is a monopoly. No company in a receipt of a monopoly is going to do the right thing. They're just going to take and take and take and take and take because they can, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's the stupidest thing to privatise that you could possibly imagine. Uh, The second thing is, of course, you are forced to pay for it. It's a monopoly. You're forced to pay for it, and there's virtually no regulations of any kind whatsoever. How can there be if our beaches and our uh, rivers are covered in uh, hot sewage? Zero regulations. We're up to our eyeballs in this stuff, and the Tories are surveying the scene thinking, uh, hey, you know what we need? Fewer regulations. They've actually said that. With this house building thing. Fewer regulations, that's what we need. (laughs) And it's not resonating with people at all. People are thinking, hang on a minute. I mean, even their fans are pausing for breath. And uh, but it's worse than that, of course, because the companies who have been gifted, who were gifted, literally given these uh, businesses, they didn't even have to buy them; they just got given them uh, with a sweetener on top of um, billions of pounds of our money. It's incredible what's happened. They said, thanks very much. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the infrastructure as such as it is to borrow against. And we're going to borrow and borrow and borrow. And what we're going to use the money we borrow for is to reward ourselves for excellence in being us. And so the companies that we gave our water system to borrowed something like 56 billion pounds since uh, privatization and gave it to themselves.
It's the scam of the millennium. I mean, name me a bigger scam than that. £56 <coughs> billion. <pounds. coughs> oh, dear. So, um, it's almost... I'll come back from the break and we'll have 10 minutes of a three-hour show and we still haven't had one solid, definite improvement that the Conservatives have made in the last 13 years. And I've been asking for almost three hours now and I haven't had one, not one solid one. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 60 60 973. Text 84850. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Right, well, it's getting tense now. At the beginning of uh, this show this evening, I asked for one single solitary thing that is better now than it was at the uh, start of this uh, rule of the Conservative Party. So, uh, practically 14 years now. Name, um, name one single solitary thing that has got better in all that time, because they've spent £1.5 trillion. Pounds. Trillion. Which, as I said before, if you, you imagine a football field and cover it with... If, I know we don't have £100 notes, but imagine if we did. If you covered it with £100 notes, you would cover an entire football field 10 foot deep in £100 notes. That's a trillion. That's 1.5 trillion. <laughs> they spent that. What do we get? Can you think? I can't. So it's getting tense now because there's under 10 minutes to go and I, I haven't had a single solitary, definite, concrete, 100% improvement in, th in uh, practically 14 years of Tory rule, which is kind of depressing, really. I mean, can we uh, go back and start again? It wouldn't it be like a, a great if it was like a video game. You could just turn it off and on again. Then we could do the whole thing. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? I couldn't stand doing the whole lot for the last 13 years. Maybe we could pick a different 13 years to do over. Leeds. Hello, Sam. Ah, hello. Sam. Great show. Thanks. I'll tell you what, what has got better. <clears throat> yes. Everyone now realises that Boris Johnson was a crap prime minister. He was terrible, terrible leader. Yes. Before, people are like, oh, yeah, all right, well, I'd like to have a, uh, you know, I'd like to have a point with him, but well, that's how we should choose our leaders. But now everyone knows he was never up for the job. Nope. He got, uh, I mean, Brexit is a good campaigner. Yeah, fair enough. And then all of a sudden, COVID hit. Oh, we had to stand up and do a real job. Mm -hmm. And that's where, sadly, it hit us hard. The wheels hard. fell off his pram. Yes. Yeah. And he, he was just like, oh, this is too much like hard work. I, you know, I just wanted to, like, you know, wear a hard hat and a high vis and yeah. roll around the country and doing this, doing that. And Be then, popular. like, someone said, oh, you have to do some hard work. Yes. Oh, God, I don't understand this. So I think that's a benefit. That's one thing that's come out of this. People's eyes uh, have been opened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where, yeah. Where, where, where do we yeah to the charlatan. Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe to a lot of them. As well, I mean, Grand Chaps. What has he had? Like, is his fifth Something cabinet like position yeah. it, this year? Well, he's got four personalities and five um, cabinet positions this year. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and Sunak, I mean, he must be the most right-wing um, ever Tory prime minister we've had. But you know, of he's a bit time. sly and shady. But oh, I don't know, man. So some of the stuff. He stood behind and saying, oh, you know, it's all about integrity, this or that. No, it's not, man. You, you're sending people to bodies. You're still sending people, well, trying to send people to Rwanda. No matter how much money it costs. Absolutely oh, just... the opposite of everything he says is true. <laughs> yeah, I, I think when he came in, and what, what he meant was it wouldn't be so shambolic. Like, I mean, Boris didn't know what day of the week it was that he's just running around, chasing his own tail. Yeah, um, or other people's and, tails. <laughs> yeah, but we heard about that story with him and Carrie, didn't we? Jesus. Um, so, uh, yeah, so to me, that's a benefit. And I hope it's just a benefit for the, that we just see that what they're all like. Yeah. When, um, when, when, when Labour got in in 97, um, like, like, um, NHS waiting times were the highest, um, approval ratings were the lowest. In a few years, Totally flipped it on its head, and then as soon as the Tories get in, it's reversed again. It's like 96 yeah. again. 
Um, well, it was and, never it was never as bad as this. This is the worst that the NHS has ever oh, been. Yeah, you know. terrible. I mean, terrible. some of the things that the uh, the. I mean, I'm no fan of Tony Blair. I mean, for a while there, it did look like he, he was, um, you know, somebody who could really deliver great things, and he and he did. I mean, I think domestically, he, he did a decent job. Yeah, I mean, the minimum I'm, I'm, wage. I'm 40, growing minimum, up with minimum, him and Brown. Minimum well, wage. I mean, Brown was a chancellor. He he was the man, and he cares. He, he certainly does, guy. yes. I mean, he's a serious person. When you hear yeah. him speak, you think, oh, my God, that's yeah. what a politician used yeah. to sound like <laughs> yeah. before this the, is the a clowns took over. This is a statesman here. <laughs> yeah. And then when you hear Liz Truss, uh, what, what would she say? Like, oh, I don't know, the rubble of this or whatever, the yeah. anti-growth Absolutely. coalition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anti-growth coalition, God. yeah. It's just, it's just pathetic. It's become so divisive, I don't know. And it's like, but at least I think with Tony Blair and, and Brown, they, they wanted to bring people together. But, you know, this like, it's just like division, culture wars. It's, it's just hot air, it's rubbish, it's a waste of time. All they have, yeah. All right, thanks a lot, uh, Sam. Got to go, because uh, time's running out. <clears throat> I used to um, have, I uh, uh, probably still do, but I, I, it's beyond my ability at this moment to uh, search for it. But I used to have a, a list as long as your arm of uh, the things that were achieved under the Blair Brown years. <clears throat> a short version of which is um, the shortest hospital waiting lists for 40 years. And, and now, now look. The Taurus took over the world's number one rated health system. Now our health system is so bad, you cannot afford to get ill. You just can't, unless you have private medical insurance. If you're well off, no problem. The doctor will see you straight away. If you're not, we're really uh, swamped uh, at the moment. Would you mind coming back when you're dead? 11 years of uninterrupted economic growth under Blair and Brown. Smaller class sizes than ever. Huge investment in schools. The minimum wage, sure start, and on, and on and on it goes. I've been uh, asking for three hours now, and I still haven't had one solid uh, example of a thing that is better now than when the Tories took over 14-odd years ago. I'm still looking. Cornwall. Hello, Malcolm. Hello, Nick. How are you, from my, from my friend? Um, good, thanks. Tell me something your good. Wait, your wait is over. Go on. It's a good, bad uh, benefit of the Tory government and it's culminating in the Sunak. And it is that following Brown, uh, Miliband, and the main reason for it, Jeremy Corbyn, that a Labour leader could shoot someone on Oxford Street and not <laughs> lose a single vote. Well, um, you say that now, I wouldn't get too comfortable if I were you, Malcolm, because no, I think the I, um, polls are going to narrow significantly. No, Nick, and, and, and my, my follow-up point is this. It's a prediction. I think there will be a general election in May, if not before, because I think the Tory party are close, and it was borne out this evening on, on Sky News <coughs> newspaper review by Annabel Denham of the Institute of Economic Affairs <laughs> on Clifton Street, yeah. who said that the Conservatives, they can't really get rid of Sunak. And there is there's going to be something coming from the backbenches of the Tory party fairly soon, where they can't stomach any more of what Sunak is doing to the country. And my prediction is, as I say, a general election um, in May, I wouldn't be surprised if not certainly before. And Keir Starmanick, well, uh, the, the analogy I, um, I made of shooting someone on Oxford Street, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's all about Keir Starmer is dropping policy promises and it is having no effect, or I hope it won't have any effect on, on Labour Party supporters. I am one, a, a big, big Labour Party supporter, yeah. uh, a, re, a Remainer. And we just have to get through this and get Labour in, because as, as everybody knows, a, a Labour government is going to repair and build schools. It's well, going to repair uh, and I, build If they get the time, I seriously don't and think that they will. I mean, uh, well, I guess we'll find out when we get there, but they're not going to be able to do any of that in the first term, so they're going to have to set up a second term. Whether they will get that or not, well, I kind of doubt it. Malcolm, 
Sorry about that, but I've got to go. That's it. Not one single thing. I'm going to count that as a failure on my part. 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 Failure on my part.